Thank you. We we just trying to clear up the room because we have uh, the last uh, last uh, uh, note. I think we were informed like 1,000 people had signed up, uh -huh. and the room capacity is only 250. So we okay. are trying to arrange a room now, and we have a. Uh, Um, uh, the other panels. I hope uh, Doc, uh, Professor Rifani is he is he here, Pak? Not yet, Pak. Not yet. I think not yet. Uh, is it Pak? Yes, yes. Pak. Not yet. Come. Not oh, yet. Okay. Because yeah, I, mean, uh, I I already asked some uh, student to leave this meeting. Many of them already left, but still 250 again. Rich again. <laughs> It's 1,100 uh, re registered in our uh, form. So how many thousand? What uh, 1,100 <laughs> before you stop. So, yeah. so this so is like shocking, a, yeah. this is like a record breaking for us. This is uh, the record, <laughs> the, the highest uh, participant so far. I don't know. And we have more in the YouTube channel. Uh, there are more. Yeah, there uh, are two. There are two YouTube channel. Uh, we provide uh, as well. another another channels, but still. <laughs> It's still 250. Wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. So, uh, is Professor is here? Panelists, uh, no, few panelists, Dr. Rifani, uh, Professor Rifani, uh, uh, Pak uh, uh, pa Julian, and Pak Rudi, and Pak Ar pa is Pak pa Arif here? Pak pa Muhammad Arif? Yes, Pak. Ah, Pak, apa kabar? How are you, Pak? Alhamdulillah, good. How are you, Pak? <laughs> ah, good. Thank you for coming, Pak. <laughs> Thank you that you're able to come in. We have, we have so many students, uh, uh, people who want to listen to the discussion today. Like, this is like really... So many uh, left and so many... Coming in. I'm trying to see if it's... Uh, people left and come. Yeah, I'm trying to see if uh, the so other part the time is, is still 250. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh boy. Wow. <clears throat> like everyone, every time somebody moves to the YouTube and then another one coming in. Another one coming in. Uh, uh, funny, uh, I think in. international relations will defeat public relations <laughs> something. <laughs> The popularity of the international relation will be, uh, yeah, become uh, stronger. Yeah? It become, I don't know. This uh, this topic is. is uh, uh, I'm still trying to contact. Hi, right. so Pak. Namanya apa? So many students. Bapak tadi dengar nggak dipanggil-panggil? Enggak dengar. Eh. Uh, uh. di uh, ulang lagi ya. Eh, uh, tadi udah bisa itu kok. Tadi uh, ah udah dipanggil-panggil enggak bisa. Oh, Pak Julian is uh, yeah. trying to get in. He's still right. not yet in. Sebentar, sebentar. Pak Rudi ya. Pak Rudi ya? Eh Pak Rudi nggak bisa masuk Pak. Ya, yeah. we're waiting for one thousand try to get in one thousand and hundred. Seprotektif dia misalnya, jadi ini hal-hal yang harus kita coba bersama. Contohnya, nah tadi diskusinya sudah kita lakukan ya tentang iklan. Nah, pertanyaan ini Why there is a bullet study? Okay. Okay, Pak, uh, Pak Rudi, Pak Julian, and Prof Lipani. Pak Rudi seems cancel his. Pak Ari. Yes. Pak Julian mau masuk tapi nggak bisa gimana ya? 
No, we're trying to uh, move people to YouTube now, and it, it's it, still trying, keep trying, and uh, uh, keep trying, because uh, it's just uh, a lot of people. Just keep trying. <laughs> wow. Okay, sorry. Ah, you must. Two past ten. Can we open now? Uh, no, we we have to wait back because the the main speaker, <laughs> Julian, is not yet in. <laughs> and also, uh, maybe. Uh, it's I already told the uh, professor Rifani, professor, we have 800. Yesterday I told her, him that uh, so far we have uh, 800 uh, participants. So please come earlier. Otherwise you cannot join in because uh, everybody tried to enter at the same time. <coughs> Uh, Alfi, Alfi, yeah. Uh, could you contact Professor Rifani, please? Yeah, sudah pak. Then, then Prof tidak bisa masuk pak. Tidak bisa masuk. Sorry, sorry. Iya, sama Pak Rudi pak. Ah, ini ada Pak Julian. Sorry, yang Pak Julian. Sorry, I'm being late. I'm sorry. Hi, Pak Julian. We're still fighting for the space here. Okay. Crowd it. Yes, we're still fighting for Professor Rifani here, and also Pak Rudi Sukandar. Okay. And this is the first time ever that our discussion becomes this jam-packed full, Pak. I think this is more like... How many questions? More than 1,000, Pak. Hi, Pak. Hi, Pak. Everybody here, the speakers. Pak Rudi, halo Pak Rudi, sudah ada Pak Rudi kayaknya. Sudah Pak. Pak Rendro in charge as a moderator. We are moderating in our discussion today. Pak Rendro. Ya. Okay. Pak Prof. Yes, Prof Rifani. Halo Prof. Yes, Prof Rifani. Alright, please go ahead. I'm full. Okay, thank you, bro. Ya, Pak Rudi, bisa dibuka atau bagaimana nih tadi urutannya? Saya agak lupa. Saya yang buka atau Pak Rudi? Pak Rudi. Pak Rudi ya, silakan Pak Rudi. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat siang, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua, Bapak Ibu sekalian. Terima kasih sudah bergabung dalam acara webinar kita pada hari ini. Yang bertajuk, uh, I'm supposed to talk about it in English, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, Pak. Sorry. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining us in our webinar today. Um, I think this is one of the uh, first experiences that I have when uh, the forum is really uh, packed with everyone to join. And then and I think it's probably because the, the topic is quite interesting for uh, some people. Is on South China Sea, and we look at uh, we look at that from a, a multi-dimensional perspective. And I would like to thank uh, all the speakers today uh, who have uh, is it, um, um, willingly been trying to to to, to join us in our uh, discussion today. And then also I would like to thank uh, uh, Rendro and the Research Center to um, to to provide all the opportunities for today. So um, I think um, that is all. Uh, thank you very much and enjoy the webinar today. Parendro, back to you. Thank you very much, Pak uh, Rudi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Our distinguished uh, guest speakers, your lecturers and students. Thank you very much for coming to our monthly discussion. Today, uh, 25 September, 
And uh, first of all, let me uh, introduce myself. I am uh, Rendra Dani, uh, head of the Research Center of LSPR Communication and Business Institute in Jakarta. We will be the moderator for this event. And I would like to also thank to Pak Ari Widodo, uh, the one who uh, becomes speakers and the one who initiated this uh, discussion. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, uh, I really super, uh, surprised and of course uh, uh, very happy at the, at the same time, of course, because we have a fantastic uh, response from the participants. <coughs> uh, as, uh, yesterday, we have 1,100 1, participants uh, registered themselves. And uh, this is, uh, as Pari said before, this is a, a new record uh, for the for holding a webinar so far. Uh, we have, uh, we had to close the registration yesterday because, yeah, uh, we uh, have the capacity, maximum capacity is about uh, 250 participants. But uh, don't worry, uh, if the capacity is already full, then we already prepared two other YouTube channels. First is from our YouTube channel, LSPR channel, and uh, the second one is here by YouTube channel. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, the, the, the great uh, enthusiasm from the student, uh, I think it's uh, become an indicator that this topic and the problem in the international relation has become a big concern from our student, uh, especially maybe from the freshmen, yeah, because as I, I can see that uh, there are so many, the majority of the student is a freshman student who may choose the uh, 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 stu uh, who might study international relations as their future major. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Today we have uh, five uh, speakers, ascending speakers with uh, different uh, background and expertise, different from different countries. Yeah, we have, uh, of course, uh, from China, from Malaysia, and from Indonesia. So, um, uh, please allow me to uh, introduce the the first speaker. Will be from the from China, yeah? uh, Dr. Yan Yan. Dr. Yan Yan Hi. is already here. Good afternoon, Dr. Yan Yan. Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you so much um, for coming for our uh, discussion. So, uh, Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Yan Yan is Director of Research Center of Ocean Laws and Policy in the National Institute for the South China Sea Studies. She had a PhD in the University of Hong Kong on public international law and her master degree from London School of Economic and Political Science, LSE. Her research uh, interest covers area is uh, the law of the sea, maritime, maritime security in the Asia Pacific, China's maritime law and policy, and the South China Sea. Okay, uh, sorry, Anya. The the first uh, speaker yang be, will become the uh, our first speaker. Do you have a presentation to? Uh, um, huh? I I hi. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. 
Can you hear me? Because yeah. I cannot see myself on the screen, so I don't know where I am. So I'm not <laughs> sure whether you can see me clearly. And when I when I hear your voice, I uh, there's a, a problem of uh, this uh, networking thing. So I'm I'm not sure it's about the Wi-Fi or anything else. But I'll try my best to make myself clear. And um, yes, so um, well, first of all, I would like to thank um, the organizer and Mr. Uh, Revani uh, uh, to uh, invite me and, and uh, to come to this um, event. I think this is uh, very interesting and it's also my first time to communicate with uh, Indonesian students uh, with that large number of Indonesian students. It's my first time experience as well. So um, I haven't prepared much. But I think um, if I'm the first speaker to talk about the South China Sea, I think maybe I can, I can give a short uh, briefing of what has happened in the year 2020 in the South China Sea. Maybe, maybe like, a, like an opening up of, of, of today's um, seminar. Well, um, I would like to say that um, since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in earlier this year in the February, I think we all see the tension in the South China Sea have surged. And there are many reasons for this. I think uh, one of the most important reasons is the sharp deterioration of um, China-U.S. relations over a variety of issues, especially the South China Sea. So um, no one can deny that the U.S. Uh, is already a player in the South China Sea, uh, although it's not a claimant. Um, well, from this year, I think the U.S. has uh, stepped up its military presence in the South China Sea, as well as uh, its criticism of uh, China's actions and China's claims in the South China Sea. And it has, uh, besides the military presence, it has uh, submitted a letter on June 1st to the U.N., uh, making clear its stance and also uh, the uh, very famous July 13 U.S. Secretary uh, of State uh, Pompeo's uh, major statement on the South China Sea. And I think um, many things happened, so I would like to just, I would like to just single out some, some, some issues, some events that I think that are, um, that are more, most critical um, recently. And also, um, I think uh, the, uh, the tension rise in the year 2020, uh, because um, all the claimant states, every one of us, uh, has hardened our positions. Even during the pandemic, nobody back off. And uh, people, no, uh, the states um, have uh, made uh, their own activities at sea and trying to uh, uh, harden their own positions in the South China Sea. And that's um, the second thing. Like, for example, the uh, the note rebel um, submitted to the to the uh, UN by all the states, all the claimant states, including the uh, extra regional states, and also the fishing issues by illegal fishing of Vietnam and the oil and gas exploration between uh, Malaysia, Vietnam, and China, and also uh, yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So everybody is making a uh, its own moves in the South China Sea, and China also uh, established. Uh, two districts under the Sunshine City in this April, um, which uh, is uh, is a big news to uh, to many of these uh, watchers of the South China Sea. And I think um, there is another reason why tensions has arise in the year 2020 is because uh, the COC negotiation that we are all looking forward to, and we all have uh, have uh, have much uh, have much expectations. Of has been uh, suspended due to the uh, due to the uh, the uh, the pandemic, the situation of the pandemic this year. So um, I think the COC negotiation is uh, the working group meeting and the high level uh, senior officials meeting. I think it's a very important communication venue, a platform for China ASEAN states. Um, the problem of uh, of the year 2020 is that it has been postponed. So none of the working group meetings and high level official senior officials meetings have been uh, conducted so we i think that both china and asian states we have uh, no face-to-face uh, -face communication platform to uh, to say what we are concerned what our concern is in the south china sea and what we expect from others i think this is very important uh, but i'm happy to see that uh, it, it has resumed in earlier this year oh no earlier earlier this month september the 3rd although it's a special meeting uh, between china and, uh, and asian states i think it's a good sign that uh, i think the coc negotiation might be resumed very soon um, 
And but uh, finally, I think that although uh, the situation the tension has rise, but I think the whole situation in the South China Sea is still stable. Although there are many uncertainties, of course, but it's still uncontrol it's un- still controllable. That means that I don't think that there will be a uh, a big uh, how to say there will be a turbulence in the South China Sea, but things won't change much uh, compared to net to last year. And I think the, uh, the October. Uh, especially before the U.S. presidential election, it will be a uh, uh, October will be tough for us, for every one of us. So I I sincerely hope that we can survive this year, and looking forward to next year and see where we can have a have a more um, peaceful and more s- more stable and more uh, yes more beautiful South China Sea in the year 2021. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yan Yan. And uh, we will move to the uh, second speaker at today. Uh, the second speaker is Dr. Julian Aldrin. Aldrin. Uh, Julian, Dr. Julian Aldrin. Uh, let me uh, introduce uh, the short video from Dr. Julian. Uh, Dr. Julian is head of department of uh, head of Department of Political Science, Faculty of Social and Political Science in Universitas Indonesia, Jakarta, Indonesia. He, he was earned her PhD, uh, his PhD in Hosei University Graduate School, Tokyo, Japan in 2005. And his Master of Arts in Political Science at the same university uh, from uh, Faculty of Social and Political Science University of Indonesia Universitas Indonesia and Dr. Julian is also you already know maybe, uh, oh, maybe, yeah. some, maybe some of us already know that Dr. Julian is former uh, presidential spokesperson during the Yudhoyono uh, presidency. Dr. Julian, your the the time is uh, uh, the floor is yours. Please, uh, maybe uh, Alfi can present the presentation. Alfi. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, 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 Did you hear me? Alfie? Yes, yes, okay. Yeah, my, my sound is very clear. Okay. Um, first of all, I thank you very much for inviting me to join with our discussion today. It is a very nice topic, and although it's a little bit sensitive, I think, but I'm, I'm very pleased to hear about our participants uh, came from China, especially uh, Dr. Yang Yang has briefly addressed his uh, views about the South China Sea, actually by the Chinese perspective. So uh, in my turn, I would like to uh, give you a little bit different presentation. So I think in, in my view that the most of the, our audience today are students. So I would like to try to give uh, a background and uh, like uh, sort of theories and approaching in advance, and after that, we can we can see that the contemporary uh, issues are rising out in the uh, South China Sea. So uh, let me begin with the, my presentation. To may I have the by myself, or I have to? Yeah, uh, actually, if you have your presentation, you can share with us. Uh, All right, I can share. Sorry, yes. it's not. Ini nggak bisa nggak bisa ditampilkan pak? Nggak bisa ditampilkan? Oke, okay. yeah. it is not. Yeah, technical problem. I also cannot <laughs> share your presentation. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Is, Can you help me to? Could you try the, your present to present your PowerPoint? Uh, yeah, sure. Julian. Yeah. I, I send you my pro, uh, my PPT, my PowerPoint. So. 
it's so crowded that may not crowd it may be so uh it is difficult <laughs> it's a uh, technical problem so, so sorry about this is it impossible to share our presentation now cannot sir okay so if the host maybe try to share my presentation uh, sorry sir it's not working sorry not, sir nggak bisa nggak oh. bisa oh. green iya Oh, yes. uh, maybe uh, we, we can try later, Dr. Julian. All right. Uh, maybe we can uh, allow another speaker to all right, all right. before your turn. Okay. Because okay. we we have we have two uh, PowerPoint, one one uh, with me and one uh, with uh, Alfie, but we cannot present. We we will try. Again, Alfi coba lagi dong, Alfi, Alfi. Nah ini. Oke. Okay. Itu itu bisa right. tuh Pak. Have, ini udah bisa. Ini udah bisa Alfie. nih Pak, udah kelihatan. Nah. Apa masih ada kelihatan? Alright, oke. Okay. Ya di dibesarin, oke. Okay. Right, let me start with the if you talk about the South China Sea, I wanna try to give descriptions about to for us to understand about the Middle Kingdom and could and could as I type my title today. Uh, Address. So, and then the next. Is this from me or uh, from uh, Alfie, Pak? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Pak. <man. laughs> uh, yeah, it's the uninteresting technical problems. Yeah. Right. So, this is uh, difficult because I'm sorry, Doctor Yang, because in Indonesia, as you may know, we are just. A little bit trouble with the internet connectivity, so it's a totally different with your country because China, uh, if I'm not wrong, now is uh, implementing the 5G, right? But we are still in the three or the something at the less more than three. Okay, let me begin with the China call as Zonggu. Okay, please correct me, uh, Dr. Yang, if I'm wrong here. So if you look at this map. It is the ancient map uh, came from China. So the first map, the upper, we know that it's uh, created about a long, long uh, century ago. And the second, the below, is the map, if you can go to the Takutsuku University, uh, northeast from the uh, Tokyo. At the university, now you found, you can find the the map okay so this is actually if you say the map of china would you mind if every participant mute the speaker so china like the uh the kanjis it means that the center and country the center mean like a two Zong in the Chinese and Gu means uh, country that the center country. So okay, it's a different pronunciation if we we, we uh, pronounce by the uh, Japanese uh, word is since we call that uh, Chuboku, all right? So this means that the, I refer the title of the Okay, would you pass the the next the middle real middle kingdom in the world? I mean that the this uh, map uh, ancient map. Please the next next step. Udah. Is it good or next? So I I would like to describe about the one book here. Yeah. I think all of the students, especially 
who concerns and studying in international relations or uh, as a, a, a politics, of course, as well. So we know that the one's book, uh, titled Politics Among Nations, is very, very uh, classic book, yeah, wrote by the Hans Morgenthau in 1949. So this book uh, describes about the political realisms. You know that the uh, Morgan too, and the latter part of the after after he completed the power political nomination, he wrote uh, some articles, uh, and we, we can read as the, the Far East, for instance. This is the the article I think just should not it down about the China. Actually, at the first uh, occasion, Morgan too, uh mentioned China as the most powerful nations. It's a, of course, it's in terms of predictions of him, actually. So, but if you say this way, and uh, probably it's very common for the other uh, students in international relations, many books in the related, uh, of course, are very, uh, very in line. Ini kalau mau WA, bisa nggak, Le? With the... Uh, <laughs> with the... Uh, uh, this book, like... Uh, wrote by the former uh, Secretary of State of the U.S., uh, Henry Kissinger. Kissinger wrote some books. Bisa masuk tadi soalnya banyak I'm yang sorry. keluar. Masa tadi sampai pembicaraan nggak bisa masuk. Halo, Mbak. Tolong di Jadi dia minta yang di Livia. Bisa mute, Alfi. Mbak Livia, di mute aja, Alfi. Nggak di mute ya, Mbak. Okay. Tolong yang lain di, di mute dulu uh, speakernya so, ya. Terima kasih. It's a book. It's a, for me, it seems to me it's a look like a Bible for the who concern and, and studying in the political relations, especially on the international relations. So this is a sequential process. If you want to go to the now uh, to understand about the terminology of the real Middle Kingdom in the world. We can go to the uh, libraries to see that the uh, uh, historical perspective, a storytelling perspective. So this book is could probably uh, give us uh, a little explanations about the, what is China uh, speaking now. This is, okay, to the next, the next step. Sorry. Okay. All right. Oh no no. Okay. This is a concept. I try to describe about the if you talk about the superpower, like for instance, such as the USSR, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, we know that the three pillars actually they have in politics, in military, and of course in economy. So we know that the, the Soviet Union uh, at the time during the Cold War with the USSR vis-a-vis -vis in the US at the time for the several decades, the one reason of the why uh, the USSR actually failed or lost their own superpower because not as a political and not in military, but actually is the only due to economy fails. So this is a uh, uh, capture about the, the USSR. You know that the capture is the uh, in Berlin, uh, borderline. So it is the symbolic to declare about the reunification of Germany to make clear about uh, the rivalry between the USSR and US is over and okay. The next one. This is uh, just illustration about the Cold War game. And you know that the end of the Cold War, especially is drive by the two leaders at the time. Of course, we, we don't, we don't uh, deny about the, the leader or the president of the US at the time, the president Ronald Reagan, and of course his counterpart from the USSR, the Secretary General of Mikhail Gorbachev. So, so they, Reach agreement to sign 
that the Cold War ends. Okay, next. The next, sorry. Yes. Let's. I, I mentioned about the one of the pillars is economy. So we have to uh, underline about the economy factors in line with the, if you, if we see that the U.S. Are still sustain or still maintain his, uh, uh, their, uh, their superpower, because due to the economy as a history, historical perspective, economic of the U.S. are very, very uh, clear to see that their achievement and their, uh, their sustainability in economy. So go ahead, please. We have the very limited of time. Uh, so this is the era of the U.S. domination. Okay. Why? Uh, the U.S. after the post, post uh, Cold War is the, the one single uh, majority, the one, it's only one as a superpower because the, the Repower, the USSR in the uh, other side is stepped down all the columns. So, okay, we passed away. This is, okay, we know that the, after, I, 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 I just described about the, uh, the previous uh, slides, then the US actually has uh, her privilege as the one single majority in terms of civil power for the long, uh, the several years and at least uh, two decades. And then, but uh, the rhetoric has changed in 2009. Why 2009? Okay, if we talk about the economy's uh, factors as the one of the pillars to be a superpower, of course, it's the uh, uh, one of the three pillars. We know that the 2000, in 2009, Japan, as the many decades, as the second largest uh, world economy, replaced by China. This is, if you look, take a look, this is the uh, graphic that China and Japan and, and GDP, if we reverse to GDP, our purchasing power parity at the, at the uh, same time, we can see that the Japan actually has uh, made the point in the middle of the 2009 and 2010. So this is the first milestone, I think, for China to make their countries and actually go to the next step at the second largest economy in the world after the US, until now. So, okay, please. Please, next, okay. This is the just only, uh, okay. It is this descriptions about the economic uh, situation, China compared to Japan and compared to the, the others, and China and Japan is undeniable. China is the number one since the beginning from the 2010 until now. And Japan is this, the, large, the third largest economy in the world after China. Okay, please. Please. So this is the how the superpower compare. You can see, actually, I have limited uh, my, my, my view about this only in, the, in terms of the economy uh, views. So we can see that the U.S. and the China is not uh, so uh, so far uh, between the two. If compared with the economy and GDP, of course, it's totally different. But the, uh, based on the purchasing power parity, the China is very uh, significantly, uh, sharply increased compared with the, 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 the past years. Okay, go ahead, please. So this is the GDP and then, okay. I can explain this uh, briefly. It is my, my view. In my view, it is balance of power in Asia. If you talk about the balance of power in Asia, I think this is to create a new balance, which China as a new, and uh, of course, uh, maybe we can do debate uh, after on, a game changer. Because the game changer, because the, the, the uh, constellations uh, around politics and economy around uh, this area, especially in Asia, is changed because the rise of China. 
The right of China is to uh, give the pivotal uh, rule in terms of changing the uh, geopolitic and geo strategies around Asia. Okay, please. Please. Right. This is a crucial issue. If you talk about the rebalancing power, if you talk about the geostrategic issue in Asia, we don't deny about the, the, the crucial issue. What the crucial issue is? The crucial issue means, at least in my perspective, in my sense, this refers to the South, South China Sea. Because the South China Sea is now, is a very, um, not in terms of dangers, but it's very uh, strategic yes, in economy, in politics, and of course in military activity, and, and the other as well. Okay, please. So this is, I think, uh, probably we, 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 can, uh, we can hear about this from the perspective of China, because Dr. Yang Yang, one of the uh, uh, very a uh, credible uh, person to explain about the, what some, what's happening in the South China Sea. If it concerns about the deployment of justification and the creating of the many artificial islands there. We know that this is the uh, satellite uh, picture. The development of the artificial island there is very question marks for many because we don't know actually uh, we can I, I personally of course I, I, I have some friends from China and I, I asked them so they told me about the because due to China have the interest in terms of the national interest so this, this is the terms of the deployment of China like the US in Guam they do the same way like the uh, U.S. did and, and go on in Hawaii, so we can do it in the South China Sea to build the artificial islands there. Okay, please. Please. All right. So we can, um, I, I, I think we need to uh, uh, sketch out uh, the, the, this, this uh, situation rising today in the area of the South China Sea because China, nine days line is one. It's actually and politically, and of course at a global perspective, it's very, um, see, I think it's very unclear uh, because it's, it's uh, a crime, is just one side of China. But if you look at uh, the, the, the map, uh, the past, the ancient map, as I, may, I, 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 I uh, presented before, we can see that because if we try to understand about the activity of the China, not just the only military activity in this area, South China Sea is the only place for China to access the external of the mainland of China. So, uh, okay, there's uh, the different different places uh, there, like the north. No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm not finished yet. Okay. Like the uh, not China knows, of course, about the north uh, side of the uh, the South China Sea, but it's too dangerous because uh, this in, in East Asia there's Japan. The Japan and China is still uh, now is uh, not in in, in have the comments of the their perception about the Zenkaku Island, for instance. And then if we look at the center, there is Taiwan. But Taiwan is not the Taiwan per se, because the Taiwan is very close ties with the U.S. The U.S. directly give the support to protect Taiwan based on the military uh, support. So this is one of the reasons why eventually the South China Sea probably uh, elect to the uh, Chinese perspective because it's increased to the uh, sea line communications swaps and the free of navigation, for instance, and increase to the uh, Malacca Strait and the area. But the problem is the crime is not accepted uh, by the some countries like the Philippines. The Philippines uh, go the law, and then we know that uh, the international arbitration has decided, but no jurisdiction there eventually. 
Okay, please. Please. Go ahead. Sorry. This is military basis. Is this a consequence, I think, because the military in the US now it is still maintained. We know that the in in, in this in South Asia, Southeast Asia, US have several uh, base, uh, Navy base, military uh, military bases, like in Alaska, as so far from here, from the South China Sea, and of course in Hawaii too, and Guam as well. Guam is a little bit closer compared to the other to South China Sea. We know that the, uh, the, the, a couple of uh, decades ago uh, in Subic and Clark, uh, US has the military bases, naval bases, the biggest base uh, outside the US, and but now it's close, yeah? uh, close by based on the uh, Senate of the US uh, declared that in 1991 to Close the uh, Subic Bay and uh, uh, close and the uh, clouds for the Air Force base of the US. This is the consequences mean because the rise of uh, tensions around uh, this area could be bring a speculation, of course, this is my view, that the stimulate the US to go back to the area. The next the next, yes, the next slide. So this is the consequences. I mean, it means that the you know that the, the area is the Subic Bay. Uh, now America is not present there, but now America seeks uh, opportunity to to seeking compromise, a new compromise between the the Philippines uh, to uh, negotiate the the, the place. Probably, yes, uh, to, to, in order to build the same like that they had the past about the uh, naval uh, uh, activity in the civic area. But it's not, it's not uh, 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 definitely uh, decided yet. It's probably uh, maybe the next step the U.S. Uh, thinking about the, the situations of rice over there, and we have to get back to the Southeast Asia to make sure to protect, preserve, and defend our allies, like uh, some other Southeast Asian countries there. Okay, good. Go. Good. This is military power comparison between the two, the US and the, I think it's not so important. Really. But we can see that the, the, take a picture, we can see, and understand uh, the composition if you compare with between the US and, and China, especially in the South China Sea, how many uh, there uh, have it's the, uh, the visual, etc. Okay? Good. So, this experiencing, okay? Yes, yes. it is, I think that I have. That. So, no, no, no. The next one. So, okay. I would like to address this point because it's a, the most important of why I, I should address in this uh, occasion. You know that if some of you probably uh, have read the book, Destined for War, the book by the Graham Ellison, the professor, the emeritus professor of Harvard University, a very respected uh, professor there. Ellison wrote the book in terms of the competition between the China and the US. Okay, it's a book uh, launched by the, probably uh, 2007 or 2008. There, yeah, I have a book, of course. So the, in the book, Alison try to describe if this situation is not really controlled by whom, which have to uh, involve it in, is a very dangerous. So we can see that the, the conclusion, so one of the conclusion of his book, if you see that the, the table, the periods, yeah, Alison limited the, his, his, and his team in the Harvard University to make uh, observations about the uh, probability and, and at the end, 
war and not war from the five years before now. So the, the, the result of the conclusion of his book in 16 cases, okay, who the ruling power and the rising power competes with each other, each other. And then actually only four by the 16, not result in no war. No war. But the others, all of them brings and the results the war. So this is the serious problem here. If you see that the, the US uh, compared with the uh, the other countries, US and actually yeah, won the, 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 the war, but the, the, it's not the point. The point is we have to really, really, um, I mean, the careful about the situations in terms of the South China Sea rising out uh, the, 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 the upper climbs and et cetera, the slope and free of navigation and, and, and so on. So this is, okay, the last, the last one. This is, I would like to make, it is my pin of my presentation. If, okay, okay but no one and nobody want, can imagine if the third world war will be rise or will be happen. But if war happen, South China Sea is my based on my on my own my own opinion as a potential place. Of course the, the other like uh, East Asia, the Korea Peninsula is a problem, it's a very big problem. So I don't see uh, the, the other uh, places like the Iran. No, I know that the Iran and, and the US are very high tensions, but it's a difference. Or and of course, between the India and China, there's uh, maintained the, the highly uh, tensions before the two. But it's okay, it's no problem. But in South China Sea, it's so many, because it's involved with the superpower like the US and the China, as we described the later. It's very, very uh, 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 un, 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 Unbelievable, or un, I mean, I think since we, we don't want to think about it, but storytellings, if we see that the, the last uh, decade, a century, more than 400 or 500 before century, a long, long time ago, Peloponnesian War, we know that history tells us that because the ruling power try to challenge, uh, challenge the rule power. It's actually this result or the brain result in terms of war. So like this, the Peloponnesians war, we know that Spartan and Athen in the ancient uh, Greek. So it could be happen in the same, uh, same uh, situation with the South China Sea with the different consequences and uh, a different, of course, I think says we, we, we know that we, we, we don't want to, of course, to imagine something happen that in terms of war. So, but the problem is, is I deeply concerned about this because we know uh, now the issue, if you read or if you hear about the uh, United Nations, uh, Secretary General uh, Guterres addressed us his statement that war, no one benefit, uh, no one, uh, sorry, war benefit no one. And the title of this address to deliver to the, all of the around the world. So this is refers to the South China Sea tensions, like the President of Philippines. Of course, if my president is our president from Indonesia, it's not, not so definitely addressed uh, this issue. But I think there's many people deeply concerned about the, what happening in the South China Sea area. It's a very dangerous place. Now, uh, I want to uh, we look forward and make a preparations about the worst of the worst scenario if something happened there. Okay, at that point, I'll stop here. Thank you very much.
Oh, please, moderator. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Julian. Very interesting presentation indeed, uh, and uh, a very scary too as well. Yeah, <laughs> especially the last slide. If uh, war, as he has uh, a potential place, wow! I hope, yeah, it won't happen. Yeah, we are here. We are here near from the location. Okay, let's get uh, move to the our third speaker. We have here Professor Rivani. Professor Rivani, are you here? Hello. Good afternoon. Afternoon, afternoon. Yeah. You thank you very much for coming, Professor. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Happy to be in Jakarta virtually. Yes. Almost almost able to smell the Jakarta air, which I like. <laughs> uh, Do you have a presentation, Professor? What was that? Pro uh, PowerPoint. Oh, I, oh no. because I, yeah, okay, okay. So I, I think I have it. Okay, I'm, I'm recording. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. Recording today. Okay. I think it's difficult to present because we already reached the maximum capacity. Yeah. Okay. 50 and and so I have, uh, oh, maybe okay. it's difficult to present. Should I try? Yeah, okay. Please. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, now I do the the screen share. Present now. Is it present now? Yes. Uh, and screen, right? That's the one, right? I'm more used to uh, wait and zoom. I'm and sorry. Uh, before you uh, present your presentation, let me introduce you. <laughs> <You're> All right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce you, Professor Dr. Rifari Bustami. Uh, he's an associate professor, head of Nusantara Malay Archipelago at uh, Center for Policy Research and International Studies, USM. Uh, he uh, earned PhD from London School of Economics and Political Science. The field is uh, organizational and development soci sociology. sociology. Uh, her master is from uh, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, uh, with the same uh, field, yeah, sociology, mm -hmm. and uh, he earned a bachelor, his bachelor in Purdue University. The field is also sociology. Uh, area of specialization is uh, number one, uh, Nusantara, or ethnic mm -hmm. studies. Uh, organizational studies, our CSR, three is social research philosophy and methodology, and four is transformative and uh, future studies. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, you, can, you already present your PowerPoint. Uh, okay, yeah. Please. Yeah, I have uh, uh, Edward Snowden from Malang to help me here. So, uh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, can you see my my, my, my my slides? Yes, yes, we already. Okay. Oh, ah, thank you, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Assalamualaikum and selamat siang. Good afternoon. Uh, Wuhan, Wuhan. We have friends from China as well, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, uh, let me uh, present uh, 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 my Santai paper on South China Seas and, and presenting a, a Nusantara maritime paradigm. I myself consider myself a Nusantara person because um, I, I, I uh, long, long time ago, Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, we were part of one big continent uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and after the uh, colonizers came and then they uh, uh, broke us apart and then now we have um, different nations, but we uh, do share a long history of shared heritage, uh, shared um, history, shared spirituality, shared identity. Um, unfortunately, after the colonizers left, they remained to be successful because uh, that broken um, part of us has continued on and then through those blow, those those holes, 
those uh, chasms of of colonizers, right? And uh, we remain to be uh, disunited in some ways. But uh, thank God, Alhamdulillah, uh, the regeneration effort and uh, is happening organically and as well as by design. And uh, we are coming together in more than one way. Uh, we were once uh, one big religious community, spiritual community, cultural community, political, economic community, um, historical community, a maritime community. Now the linkages are being um, uh, rebuilt slowly. And uh, we hope uh, that this effort of rebuilding, of regeneration, of, of reconnecting uh, to ourselves, to our home, will continue on. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. So I, have, right, right. I will continue on. Right, I should do it like that. Right. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, I'll, I'll present the perspective uh, which we call the, the Nusantara maritime maritime perspective. Yeah. So uh, let me start with uh, some brief uh, um, intro, and I think has this uh, the the, the the complexities of uh, South China Sea's uh, realities have been captured by uh, <coughs> the speakers, uh, the esteemed speakers, uh, <coughs> and I probably should not delve too deep into this, um, but we do acknowledge, we do understand uh, as much as we can, of course, uh, uh, that there are uh, latent and sometimes overt conflicts uh, occurring in South China Sea um more than one friend and it is a is a very <coughs> complex um kind of um space yeah this south china sea uh, seas in fact right with a this plural plural there and in that sense it makes it a, a big uh a big puzzle to be solved it's a conundrum right to to try to realign all the forces together in a square shape, the green with the green, the red with the red, the yellow with the yellow, and that is a is a is is a quite a riddle to solve. Right? And, and and it seems like <laughs> uh, this uh, Rubik Rubik cube is becoming more and more complex with the coming of other forces, uh, with coming of other um, strains of of of, um, of globalization and different forms of globalization is coming in. And um, uh, sometimes voluntarily, sometimes by force, sometimes uh, through invitation, sometimes they say invite themselves and all that. So we have a, a situation that <coughs> has been has been well articulated by uh, speakers before this. Uh, that is uh, uh, potentially explosive. Uh, it's something that can pose as a <coughs> Threat to the stability to the uh, to, to the region, uh, so it is it is complex. It is uh, potentially dangerous. Uh, we play with uh, this kind of fire in the water. So uh, we, we 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 take note and we are cognizant of this uh, situation, um, and 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 we will need to come up with some possible uh, set of solutions, right and. From here onwards, I will present an alternative paradigm to this whole conundrum. Let me start with what we are stuck with first, right? I begin with 1648, uh, a treaty called the Westphalian uh, Treaty. It is uh, it's a treaty that basically <coughs> recognized by historians and, and, and social scientists, political scientists, international relations ex uh, experts as the treaty that brought together Euro European nations, and eventually, uh, that is in a way, uh, is the birth of nation states. Uh, and and nation states from here onwards are more or less defined by its borders, right? So the borders become, and the territory that the borders uh, protect become the space of sovereignty of nations. So the empires fight among themselves, and they come uh, together with a series of the treaty is actually a series of, of, of understandings and agreements, and they eventually 
uh, became the dominant paradigm of international relations, becomes the dominant paradigm of territory, becomes the dominant paradigm of sovereignty, which eventuates in, like it or not, the World War, we can argue World War II, and eventually the United Nations, right? So we have uh, a paradigm of um, uh, relations between communities that's defined by borders. And whenever the, the borders, the territories, the perbatasan, you know, the sempadan in bahasa, in bahasa, or perbatasan, they have been encroached. It is seen as a violation of sovereignty oftentimes. Get out of our, our waters. You, know, you have violated our waters. Get out from our waters. Right? You have violated the air of whatever country. Get out from the air. Tenggelamkan kepalanya itu. And and we find this interesting because for centuries long, right, people from Sumatra would uh, would, would be crossing these borders, right, and uh, and and be fishing in. Uh, close to the peninsula Malaysia, peninsula Malaya, or at that time, and likewise, it was happening the same way, right? And um, what's interesting is it continues to happen, but it was it's never being mentioned uh, in the news because if you were to take up this matter uh, further, it become an international incident. But it, it, it continues to happen, uh, to, to occur, to, to, and, and recur many, many times in our waters, right? Uh, but sad to say, the definition of migrants are born more or less. Uh, the new modern definition of migrants, the, more def the new definitions of uh, of of, of uh, you and I, uh, they and us, are being defined by this uh, Westphalian paradigm, which is a hegemony of uh, Westphalian uh, hegemony of thinking hegemony of paradigm between communities, between nation states. And we, in this colonized part of the world, accept that we, the Antarans, which, are, which one define uh, nation states quite differently from them. Right? We have the Mandala system, you remember that? Uh, we came to accept them, right? And they arbitrarily draw different lines uh, on our borders, right? The British, the the Dutch, the, the Portuguese, the Spanish came in. They so, said, okay, this is yours, this is mine, right? So much so that we see, you know, in, in, in Northern Malaysia, uh, both Malaysia and Thailand, right? We have a line that is drawn along the, along the river and you see that the couples, the village, the village is being divided, right? So we have cousins and uncles and aunties and grandpas, grandmas in the same village being divided by this British uh, border that's called territory right, and divide between two nations and they divide the villages as well. And it's even sillier to imagine in Kalimantan itself, we see you know, that you can have, you can cook in Indonesian kitchen and dine in Malaysian living room because the house is divided along the border of Indonesia and Malaysia. Why? Because we have this smart, ingenious super intelligent British uh, and, and, and Dutch draw a line on the house dividing Indonesia and Malaysia. So as the same household, they cross this line, you can Indonesia, they cross this line, then Malaysia. Cross the line, Indonesia, cross the line. Indonesia. So they can live in two countries in the one house, right? So that's the genius of the Western hegemonic Westphalian paradigm. What I like to introduce is slightly different, which is the Nusantara Maritime Paradigm. Jadi kita ni orang Nusantara gitu. Um, the Nusantara Maritime Paradigm uh, approaches and looks at the world somewhat differently. Right. I like to begin the Nusantara thing with different historical roots. Mempunyai uh, akar-akar sejarah yang berbeda-beda gitu. I'm, I'm, I'm learning my Indonesian language. Right? So if I'm wrong, please, please correct me. Uh, if you look at the historical sociological perspective, right? We begin with Sumpah Palapa, Oath of Palapa, Majapahit Oath, right? Um, uh, Gajah Mada, the Prime Minister, if you will, or the Prime Minister of the, the then King, Hajim Wuruk, yeah, uh, uh, said, yeah, tidak akan makan yang kenyang, tidak makan tidur yang lena itu, selagi tidak bersatu di Nusantara. As long as uh, Nusantara is not uh, united under Gajah Mada, yeah, they will not stop. He, he will not uh, he will not eat 
well, you will not sleep well. Yeah? Uh, and, and it was defined, Nusantara is defined um, as space that ranges Am I, am I connecting? Ah, uh, Herlina. Uh, I mean, Herlina. Uh, Alfi, tolong di mute dulu itu, Alfi. Oh, ya, yeah, oke. Okay, okay. Herlina, Herlina. Kayaknya ada Gojek di sana. <laughs> I'm a good jack. Sorry, so so you have presented. So um, more or less with the with this sumpah with this of, of Gajah Mada of, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, in nineteen thirteen thirty four, Nusantara was born. Yeah, uh, the, at least the term Nusantara in under the concept of Gajah Mada, and, and that was. But if you look at the history, uh, the Nusantara, uh, Nusantara, uh, the the copper plates of Nusantara was found even in 1305. So, so the idea of Nusantara, the imagination of Nusantara, the imagined community of Nusantara was there even before uh, 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 Sumpah Palapa, and <coughs> Nusantara uh, history even extends up to the Sulu government, Sulu Sultan. Uh, at that time, was not Sulu, but in the Sulu seas. So, so we have. We have the, the Nusantara uh, as our one of our historical roots uh, from Sumpah Palapa. Yeah? But if you go beyond history, yeah, go further behind, right? Time travel, the prehistoric seas, uh, we can we can see that uh, the Nusantara mari maritime paradigm, right, begins even much much further, much much longer than that. It began with Sunda land or the Benua Sunda or Pantas Sunda, <laughs> and you can see in the slide. Right, the Sunda land was once a big continent, right? It's not uh, divided uh, into <coughs> many parts of islands yet, yeah? except for Sulawesi. Yeah? But at that time, uh, Kalimantan, Jawa, and, and, uh, uh, and Sumatra, and Semenanjung, Malaya, and all that was part of a big continent. And, um, and that was in, uh, we are talking about dry land, 25 thousand BC, right? And 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 that was a long, long, long time ago. And uh, we already exist then. In fact, if you like to know the Kuris thing, the Kuris, right? One of the Kursakya, the mystic, mystical part of the Kuris is that it is made from not Earth technology, it's made of outer space technology too. And that technology is, is asteroid, using asteroid uh, metal and then the Pandai Besi, uh, the people who are the, the, the blacksmith of the Kuris, of the, the dagger that's originated from Nusantara, had the technology to smelt and melt and combine different metal together. And that is a superb technology. And they combined in the Kuris. And uh, at that time, there were many other technologies that is uh, attributed to the people back then. And we are talking about 25,000 years ago. And in fact, there are other books that talk about this period and it's not written by us, written by Westerners. And they say in Eden is actually in the tropics and tropics is actually our, our us. Right? In some ways, we are the original Aquaman, if you like to know. Right? This, is, this is where we are. And, then, and we see uh, we, we separate after, after the um, a series of, 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 of volcanic uh, eruptions and as well as floods, uh, the, the continent, the Sunda continent, the Sunda basin, broke apart right? and then uh, we became some of us stayed on the land and the mountains and some of us became uh, the people of the sea and a lot of us uh, travel and have uh, stories about the sea and this is a long long time ago right? um, and the whole idea of uh, Nusantara slowly evolved and emerged as a dominant paradigm of Parantaos right? uh, and then due to the massive flooding and great majority of the people of Sunda land. Uh, when we talk about Sunda, we're not just talking about Bandung, the beautiful people of Bandung, and, and, and Jawa Barat, right? and Sundanese, and all that. Um, we're talking about the, the, the big continent, so we are all part of this big continent, right? Uh, <coughs> of course, Bandung, uh, uh, Jawa Barat, tetap bagian daripadanya. The people of Sunda land migrated to distant lands, up north to Taiwan and China in the north, 
in, 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 in South New Zealand and, uh, and the Pacific and Easter Islands in the East as well as Madagascar in the West. In these places, they became early settlers, aka natives. So you can find, you know, the the the, <coughs> the people in New Zealand and the desert, they are actually ethnically, genetically related to us. Even as far as Hawaii, they are genetically uh, 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 related to us. So the rest remain behind and struggle with the new landscape and new ecosystem and the experiences are even recorded in flood myth and uh, migration folklore, right? Now, this is a professor, his name is Professor Oppenheimer. If some don't know, he talks about the no, nomadic uh, uh, people and all that. So he uh, debunked the whole out of Taiwan theory that talks about uh, us, the Nusantara people, right? Uh, uh, originating from Taiwan. So it's actually wrong. Uh, there are scientific facts to support of the out of Sunda land theory. So, and, and it, as especially through, you can read his book, Eden in the East, right? uh, the, down, the drowning of a continent of Southeast Asia. And there is strong DNA proof for that. And, and uh, there, there have been extended research in it. I'm, I'm actually part of the research as well. And Oppenheimer uh, is a scientist also in the and a former visiting professor in my university here, in University of Science Malaysia. And his theory is based on findings from history, archaeology, oceanography, genetics, linguistics, and folklore. But his study is mainly about DNA. And he has shown that, that we are talking about a big part of Nusantara, including the Papuans, right? If you think Papuans are not uh, from the different part of, of, of the world, no, they are genetically related to us. Right? Only 7% of our gene pool comes from outside, right? So, and it is being traced that even the, the whole idea of genetic flow flows from the uh, flow, flow, flows from uh, the south to the north, not the south, not to the south, right? It is proven scientifically. So you can see genetic sequencing, the whole idea of out of Taiwan that we came from Taiwan, that's wrong. Now, some of us actually traveled back from Taiwan to Nusantara, but uh, <coughs> the historical fact and scientific fact has proven that it is from Sunda land that we flow out uh, even to Taiwan and China and New Zealand and, and Hawaii and, and the Polynesian islands and, and, and Madagascar. Uh, so what, what, what are we talking about here? We are talking about Nusantara maritime paradigm. So we are very similar to the Mediterranean uh, community. Mediterranean actually means media terra, which means media is middle, terra is land. And in Nusantara is a concept which is fascinating. Right? We have a concept to describe ourselves as the people in between islands. Those are islands, Tara and Tara, between islands, right? And we look at uh, Southeast Asia, we look at Nusantara, right? The Sulu Sea, Celebes Sea, Bandar Sea, Arafura Sea, the Java Sea, Andaman Sea, South China Sea. They are all seas surrounded by land. That's a definition of Mediterranean. What, is, what does it mean? It means it's narrow access to water. <laughs> the access to water is not easy. And by implication, if you have nation borders defined by seas, you will definitely entrapping yourself into international conflict. So Nusantara did not have this Westphalian concept of sea borders, do not have the concept of territories defined, empires defined by the waters. Nusantara a long time ago had the concept of empires defined by the center, not at the border. And we look at our kampong concept, our village, our village, right? Which a lot of our villages do not have um, fences. In fact, we roam freely from one house to another, right? Because the borders are not defined as being private, right? Uh, the public space, the commons, the shared resources, the shared space is very much part of the Nusantara maritime paradigm. And if you look at Southeast Asia, if you look at South China Sea, it is a Mediterranean kind of sea when you have all these different rocks and islands and all emerging, right? Uh, and if you, and that's why we have different claims. And why? Because we have this Westphalian, this hegemony of Westphalian paradigm, 
that is dominating us, that's brainwashing us, telling us that this is mine, this is yours, this is yours, it's mine, don't touch mine, don't, this is yours, you know, that kind of thing. This is my fish, that's not your fish, that kind of thing. Um, so we lost the sense of Nusantara, the sense of Nusantara spirit. And, and then and, and, and eventually we get into conflicts, right? So the Nusantara paradigm, the Antara Nusa, the Mediterranean paradigm, the Amaleo Archipelago, is a social economic uh, uh, rantau habitat. Why do we say rantau? Because we were not migrants. We are like dolphins swimming, roaming around the waters, oceans. The sea is our land, the land is our sea. Samudra itu tanah, kita tanah itu samudra kita. Kita bangsa bahari. Uh, maritime society, we are maritime society. Yeah. And our relation with the water is very, very, very strong. We call our home tanah airku, tanah air, right? Not just homeland, heartland, we call it tanah air. Why? Because air is very strong, it's part of us, tanah is part of us. We, we understand that you know, Zhongguo have Zheng He, or China has Zheng Ho, right? But in Nusantara, right, the feminist movement has started long, long, long time ago. It's not even a movement. Right? Laksmana Ma, Ma, Malahayati, yeah? Panglima Perang Kerajaan Aceh, who actually led hundred, more than 100 armada uh, of ships uh, to, 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 to drive away the Portuguese and Dutch. I mean, this is a woman admiral, you know, in the 1500s, right? Now they're talking about affirmative action, they're concerned about this judge pass away, who were affirmed, who were fight for women rights, Busantarans, the Busantar community. We love our women, we respect our women, we uphold our women. They are not just uh, people who are our mothers, but they are they are pahlawan, they are warriors, they are, they are admirals, right? And we have uh, Hang Tua. Right. In, in, in Surabaya, we have you know, and you know, that, and, and it is a it is a university, it is an university for the Navy. Hangtua is also Laksmana. So we have who are actually a diplomat as well. So if China has Chen He, right? Uh, um, Sampo Kong, if you go to Samara, you see Sampo Kong there. And, um, and in, in, in Surabaya, we also have uh, Masjid Cheng Ho. Yeah? Uh, all these mirrors are also diplomats, right? And what the Nusantara maritime paradigm has is that we share our main oceans. We, we, we operate from the shared prosperity paradigm. So we share our, our ocean. Doesn't mean that we, we didn't have uh, wars between empires. We had wars in the empire. But the war was not about who conquered what piece of uh, rock in the middle of the ocean. Right? Of course, you can argue there is no oil at that time yet, right? And all that. But it was not because of that. It was because of a belief system that the ocean is a shared space. Because we, the belief system that borders do not define the sovereignty. It's the power at the center that defines the sovereignty. Right? Uh, and that is, in a way, part of the mandala system. And that is part of the Nusantara merit, maritime paradigm, which is quite uh, different from the paradigm of a uh, West Indian uh, uh, nation state. Right? So uh, the Nusantara mer maritime paradigm, you look right, even in, in the land, right? You see, if, and I say, if, if uh, the classic uh, uh, Nusantara city would not look like Kuala Lumpur or Pulau Pinang or, or, or Surabaya where you have TP1, TP2, TP3, TP3, TP is uh, Tunjangan Plaza, yeah, Tunjangan Plaza 1, uh, enough, you have Tunjangan Plaza 2, then you have Tunjangan Plaza 3, you keep on building malls and malls and malls in Jakarta, you know, you have huge malls, right? And, and that, that's not a uh, Nusantara model. Uh, good Nusantara model before colonization, I think the process would be like Jogja. See, the Jogja has a different concept of property. Uh, you know, the, the, the Kraton and around the Kraton itself, there's this commuters, uh, yeah, yeah? so you can um, live in that community, but you do not own that, that property. UGM, yeah? uh, Universal Gajah Mada, the land is owned by the king, the sultan, right? But the but it can be used uh, for for you know. In fact, if you look at UGM originally, it's in the in the in the in the carton, in the in, in the in the palace itself. And the whole idea of non-privatized land, uh, meaning land that is being shared, commons, 
public goods, right, is a very common concept. It's shared resource, shared prosperity. It's a very common concept in Nusantara. And the Nusantara Meridan Paradigm promotes this idea of sharedness. Even the even the apa namanya, kitchen, the you can go to the the Kraton's kitchen, the the, the 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 palace kitchen and have drinks and order food over there, right? As, uh, you can as, I've been there many many times, not too many times, but I like to go more, like a few times, right? And, and I enjoy being there. And there are times even the king comes down and visit this. Uh, the the citizens and then there's there's a beauty of it right there's a beauty of Nusantara maritime program and if you look at Putrajaya the new city in 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 in, in, uh, in Malaysia uh, the administrative center of Malaysia right the concept of common space is being recreated right um, and it's not easy to recreate that because we have uh, colonized ourselves and it's hard to decolonize ourselves right and I'm concerned that uh, Nusantara will continue to be colonized. To the extent that the Nusantara spirit and Nusantara paradigm eventually perish. Uh, so, um, next. Um, so, I, 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 before I, I continue on, and the, my simple message uh, and, and the takeaway from my presentation is this end points. And our message to the world Nusantara is our home, our tanah air. We are Bangsa Bahari. Sea ferris who roam and guard the waters. Number, two. Number three, we have been here for a long, long time, even before history. Number four, we duly respect and recognize giants out there. There's giants in the north, giants in the south, giants in the west, giants in the east, and they're combining together in, in different ways, right? And we kindly invite them, enter our home, and we will welcome you. And that's Nusantara spirit. We welcome our guests. Please kindly do not occupy our home. I repeat that. Please kindly do not occupy our home. Right? We are not giants like you all, but please do not occupy our home. We are willing to share our prosperity and hospitality. Point number seven. We are willing to share our prosperity and hospitality. And if you go to Indonesia, they are so hospitable people. It's amazing. I love the hospitality there. Uh, I remember I said this is this is like so special. You know, uh, I, I I I I I'm afraid that one day we will lose that kind of warmth, that kind of hospitality, that kind of spirit. Right. Number eight. Uh, number eight. We just want to be independent and not be colonized again and again. Enough. Malaysia has been colonized by the Portuguese and then the Dutch and then the British, and then the Japanese, and then the British again. Enough. We do not want to be colonized again, please. Right? So number nine, we are neighbors. Let's live peacefully. Let's live with peace and dignity. Dear giants out there. Number 10, and that is the creed of our Nusantara Maritime Paradigm. Sekian, terima kasih. Jales Deva Jaya Meher. Yeah. In the same, we will succeed. Thank you very much. And the uh, selected references and, and credits to those people down there. Thank, Thank you. you. Much, yeah. Thank you very much. A very interesting uh, presentation, Professor Ripani. Yeah. Uh, before we go to uh, the uh, the next uh, uh, speaker, may I question? I uh, uh, give my question. To you, Professor. Uh, yes, yes. Munggu Mangga, silakan. Ayo, go. <laughs> so, according, <laughs> yeah, it is a warming up question. So, uh, so historical, historically, according to uh, the Nusantara concept that you are uh, just uh, present to us, explain to us. Are you trying to say that the the uh, SCS is actually our an area belonging to the countries in the ASEAN regions, which was uh, previous, previously is one whole land, yeah, uh, one land, one area, and thus uh, it will be, uh, yeah, uh, uh, the 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 Westphalian Treaty will be no longer. Uh, uh, effective yeah or no, no longer uh, uh, what do you think uh, about this uh, 
is it true that you want to try like that? That uh, it is uh, actually historically is is uh, the belong to the ASEAN countries, which is uh, based on the Nusantara concept, Professor. Yeah. Um, let me understand your question um, correctly. Um, you're saying that, uh, um, am I saying that this South, East, uh, South China Sea uh, is part of us? The answer is yes. Um, yes, South China Sea is part of us. Um, it's called Nanyang. Right? It's, it so happened that I went to Chinese school from my primary up to secondary school. So Nanyang means the South uh, Sea, right? Uh, but if you see how the definition of Nanyang in, in year 2016, uh, the, the basis of the claims is not necessarily uh, based on sovereignty. It's not on sovereign land or sovereign water. It's more on historic waters, historic seas. So historic seas, they actually quoted uh, some islands, uh, I think Hansha Island and all that. But uh, so the argument is based on historical argument as well as cultural to some extent. Uh, but we have a longer historical claim, we have a longer cultural claim to the space. But then the beauty of South China Sea is that it has South China in its name, right? But we are so smart as Nusantara people, but we never unite ourselves and call this Southeast Asian Sea or Nusantara Sea, right? Uh, because uh, historical rationality or whatever. But what I'm saying is that, number one, that space is ours and has been for ours for a long, long time. It has been named South China Sea, but it is originally ours. We have proof of our scientific proof of ours, number one. Number two is that it, it, for the Mediterranean concept of space, it's very hard to use the Westphalian concept, Westphalian paradigm, to come up with a harmonious, uh, harmonious arrangement, right? And we know when the giants come in, and I mean, we I, we look at the situation in Philippines, we look at the situation here, and uh, uh, although we don't speak in one voice necessarily all the time, ASEAN, right? Uh, but we know when a bully comes in, we know. And bully from the west, a bully from the east. Now the bully in the west and east coming together or not? You know, we 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 feel that uh, you know. Come on, come on, please don't bully us. You know, uh, <laughs> please lah, please, please. Bawa pak ya, tolong ah. Gitu ya. Please, please. Uh. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, we will continue later, Professor. Let's uh, continue with the fourth speaker, which is uh, Pak Rudy, Doctor Rudy Sukandar. Parudi, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you, not against you. <laughs> okay. Please, Parudi, yeah, present your presentation. Uh, okay, I will. I will please, uh, Professor. Uh, yeah, okay. I will. I will try to present your presentation. I can present mine. Coba saya coba dulu, Pak Rendro. Okay. Let me see. Bisa dilihat? Ya, yeah, ya, yeah. bisa pak. Oke, okay. mau coba pakai introduction dua atau langsung aja? Uh, saya perlu perkenalkan saya kira pak ya. I, I need to introduce you. Ya, yeah, just minute, Pak Rudi. Uh, very brief. Ya, yeah, uh, Dr. Rudi Sukandar. Uh, Pak Rudi ini adalah is a director of LSBR Center for Research Publication Community Service at LSBR Institute of Communication and Business Jakarta. He obtained his doctoral degree from the uh, School of Communication Studies, Ohio University, USA, specializing in relate in relating and organizing intercultural communication and conflict. His research focus. His research focuses on communal and international conflict, interpersonal communication, pop culture, and media studies. He also have a postdoctoral courses 
Yeah, among others included the Comprehensive Crisis Management at Asia Pacific Center for Security Studies in 2015 and UNITAR Training Program in Peacemaking and Preventive Diplomacy for the Asia Pacific Region in 2016. That's all, Pak Rudi, silahkan. Okay, thank you very much, Arendra, for your time. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, thank all the previous um, speakers um, who have provided um, a really good introduction and also some background on on South China Sea. And uh, I got a, a two notes for uh, Professor Rifani. Uh, Rifani, I got two notes for you. One, uh, I just had Padang's food for lunch. And number two, uh, uh, um, uh, you, since you mentioned about uh, uh, Admiral Ma Malahayati, uh, what's really interesting is that uh, Mal Malahayati recruited the uh, the widows of of, of uh, the Achehnis men who were killed by the Portuguese. So um, she uh, made uh, what they call as a widows battalion uh, in Ongbale. That's uh, this really interesting uh, uh, part of the uh, history about. Uh, Malahayati too. Okay, now let me just go into my uh, presentation. Um, I, I have been thinking about, uh, before making this, I, I have had a, a thought about presenting a, a conflict on South China Sea as I, I have uh, written uh, several uh, articles on that. But then uh, since um, most of us have, have already talked about it and then decided that oh, maybe I should go into another direction. And then as a uh, 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 Part of the uh, uh, being communication uh, student and communication scholar, then I just uh, for this uh, I would like to see that from uh, another perspective, uh, uh, from another dimension that is uh, looking at into uh, South China Sea as a uh, competing narratives in the media. Um, I will not talk dwell more into the the theories because um, uh, uh, previous uh, uh, presenters have talked about this. Um, instead, I'm just uh, trying to to look at into how. Um, um, South China Sea is is uh, uh, is portrayed in, in in the media, and then so hold on yeah so the data that that I uh, um, collected uh, coming from uh, the Straits Times, this is quite a uh, 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 interesting uh, reason for me to choose the Straits Times, uh, which is published in the Singapore because um. Um, why I didn't choose uh, Indonesian Jakarta Post, for example, because I think that there is a, uh, 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 something related to uh, what is it, the conflict between, uh, we call it the conflict between Indonesia in, in, in China and, and some other uh, countries in ASEAN uh, member states, for example, they have uh, some uh, 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 conflicts regarding South China Sea, in, uh, South China sea with, with, with China. So therefore, I just uh, think that maybe I should pick um, uh, uh, the media from a country that doesn't have direct uh, uh, a conflict with 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 uh, uh, China uh, uh, in 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 uh, uh, South China Sea, so that's why that I uh, I picked the Strait Times. Uh, the monitoring dura uh, durations of, of the data is is from the uh, 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 media reporting from July till September 2020. So so it says about three months of 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 a uh, uh, data that I have. Uh, um, um, uh, viewed and then let's see that how it goes. Now, uh, the thing uh, when when we look at into the report from from the media, then we we always see that uh, uh, what we call as competing narratives. In the competing narratives, we always see that uh, one part just uh, start to give a fiery rhetoric about one another. Uh, I will I will give give you some examples about this later, and then uh, also some other narrative is this uh, support giving narrative. What I mean here is that uh, some. Uh, statements are, are uh, were provided by by uh, uh, the parties involved in in, uh, in conflict in South China Sea, uh, taking the side with one party or another in order to uh, to provide uh, what is it uh, their positions to 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 anyone who who is involved in who is involved in in, in 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 the conflict. Now let me just start with uh, uh, case number one. For example, when we look at into the fiery rhetoric, this is just an example. Uh, uh, the headlines uh, from the news that I uh, um, um, uh, studied. For example, we can see that U.S. to back nations that say China violated their South China Sea claims. This is uh, 
uh, from the U.S. Uh, uh, perspective, um, uh, and then um, U.S. blacklist Chinese individuals, and then uh, Pentagon slams uh, Chinese missile launches in South China Sea, and then uh, U.S. calls China the new. Uh, this is quite interesting. I'll leave it uh, till the end. And then from the the China part, uh, based on the the report uh, in the news, uh, uh, stating by the Straight Times. Uh, uh, one top China diplomat stated that U.S. becoming the key driver of militarizations in South China Sea, and then also U.S. destroying peace stability in South China Sea. Now, um, beside all the back and forth spat between the two uh, uh, officials from uh, the uh, the officials from the two countries uh, uh, presented by the uh, uh, the media, uh, the Straits Times. What's really interesting uh, to me is that. Even uh, uh, in, in this case that the U.S. also went back to the history, uh, uh, calling China as the new East India uh, company at sea. I'm not really sure how the British thinks about this. Uh, uh, and also um, um, probably um, 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 it might be interesting to see that too. Uh, China as a country, for example, is, 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 is given... Uh, an analogy to to uh, to a company that has that had been known in in the past to be uh, 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 the tools for the colonizations. So this is uh, uh, an examples how we can see that the the going back and forth this path between between uh, um, um, uh, the U.S. and and China, for example, regarding South China China Sea will not be uh, 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 will not end soon, and then. Um, I'm just trying to relate to uh, uh, Professor uh, uh, Julian uh, mentions with with the last uh, slide about the war, and I think um, a, a long time ago the uh, the Hollywood would would like to make a scenario about the uh, uh, the World War Three, and then the first they started with during the Cold War, they just uh, want to connect that with uh, what really happening between uh, West Germany and East Germany, and then after that they move into somewhere else into Korea. And then the Middle East, and I think right now they got more ideas about how World War Three could happen uh, that is in South China Sea. So this is an example on how um, um, the media uh, are reporting the uh, the competing narratives between within uh, parties. Especially, we can see that China, uh, we can see China and U.S. as the uh, the giant, uh, uh, the the biggest players in the South China Sea. The next one is an example of uh, uh, the news, and and also you can see that from this headline from again from the Straits Times. Then we can see that some uh, uh, countries, the member state of ASEAN, for example, or and also outside as uh, ASEAN also uh, uh, has taken um, um, uh, a side with 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 uh, with with uh, uh, an actor that the things can 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 support their cause. For example, Vietnam backs U.S. role in South China Sea, rebuffing Beijing at ASEAN meeting. Uh, uh, ASEAN meeting that just happened a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago. And then uh, I think that if, if you uh, read the news, that it uh, uh, also became one 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 forum to uh, to to just uh, uh, express the uh, dissatisfactions of uh, uh, several uh, member states of ASEAN about about the hegemony of China in in in, in South China Sea. And then uh, another uh, uh, examples on how a country, for example, sides with 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 uh, 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 the actor that they think can support them is in the Philippines, for example, on how Duterte gets stuff on China, leading back to old ally uh, America. And also, uh, there's an interesting part on how uh, um, the uh, non-claimer, non claimant uh, 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 member states like India, for example, uh, also hold exercise with the U.S. Uh, Karen Nimitz in tightening the cooperation in South China Sea. Um, this uh, some examples on how we can see uh, uh, the competing narratives that happens. The fiery rhetoric and support giving rhetoric can also be seen clearly in in reports in the media. Um, I have not been able to find any any reports from uh, in 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 July till uh, 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 September uh, August uh, uh, September two uh, thousand twenty. Uh, the past three months of any any countries that uh, take side uh, or, or support China in this uh, in this case, but uh, I think if we go back way into uh, a few years back, then we might be able to find uh, some countries that support uh, uh, China's claim on 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 South China Sea. And the next part is uh, part of the things that I found during the analysis is what we call the ambiguous narratives. 
these are the, the narratives that we can uh, that that we have seen in in the report of media as the media uh, trying to cover the statement coming uh, the statement coming from uh, uh, um, the officials of, of, of each country uh, of, of the ASEAN member states. Uh, uh, some of the uh, characteristic that that we found uh, uh, in in the reports. Uh, in, in especially in terms of ambiguous narratives, for example, uh, we can see that in inconsistent narrat uh, rhetoric that we see. So there is that in the in inconsistent rhetoric means that they, they keep changing. Uh, 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 I will I will give some example later about the inconsistent rhetoric about uh, changing the uh, the previous statement uh, uh, provided by uh, 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 other officials. So at some point that we can see that uh, uh, one statement can easily be uh, changed by other officials in just a, a matter of, uh, of, of days, a matter of a matter of hours, and a matter of days. So it just creates the uh, the impressions and also create the uh, the image that uh, uh, the rhetoric that that a country regarding South China Sea is uh, a bit inconsistent in some ways. The second one that, that uh, the characteristic that I found was there is a mixed message there. Yes, we don't like China becoming a, a hegemony in, in South China Sea, but at the same time, we also like China to cooperate with us. So um, I think uh, uh, this creates problem, especially to, uh, to, to people, uh, uh, the readers, uh, the common uh, people who just look things from, uh, 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 what is it, trying to, to figure out what, in what position, what is the positions of our country. Uh, and then uh, because the mixed message that they have, sometimes they just don't understand how uh, or, or, or what, what the, go the government is planning to do regarding the conflict that really happened. So uh, the mixed message here can, can be found also easily uh, uh, in, 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 in the, uh, the news report by the media. And another one is um, uh, the characteristic, uh, characteristic that I found in, in terms of the narratives in, 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 in the uh, uh, report by the media is uh, what I call as uh, what we call a strategic ambiguity so um, um, usually in in some ways the um, the, uh, the the media rep uh, uh, quoted um, uh, uh, statements from from uh, of government officials for example but usually uh, the government official do not give very clear explanations about uh, uh, what the what the position is all about sometimes they just give a very uh, ambiguous uh, statement just uh, trying to to make sure that they don't really put a very specific terms uh, 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 that may uh, jeopardize their position so these three uh, uh, characteristics that I found in ambiguous narratives can be uh, can be seen in the next uh, example that I can uh, uh, show you the first one in the case of the Philippines, one example. Uh, these are the reports from, uh, again, the Straits Times. Uh, as you can see that uh, we have a different tone of, 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 of uh, uh, news uh, message there by, by uh, as, as the, the media quote, uh, quoted the, uh, the statements by, by, by the Filipinos um, um, uh, officials. One example, the Philippines urges amicable approach to Beijing over South China Sea. Well, we, we should take a much more friendly approach. But uh, at the same time, uh, 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 during a couple of days, and then uh, this one was mostly taken in August. Defying China, the Philippines continue uh, patrolling Spratleys in South China Sea. And also the Philippines uh, minister accuses China of fabricating South China Sea claims. And another one that is also quite interesting is that the last one, the Philippines say it won't halt project with China firms blacklisted by the U.S., so um, uh, after claiming that uh, they, they will take uh, 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 in, uh, uh, leaning toward the, uh, its allies, the U.S., but at the same time, the Philippines also say that, no, we, we still have a, a project run, uh, uh, running, run by, by the, China, uh, the Chinese firm uh, that were blacklisted by the U.S. So this is uh, an, an example on how we can see that uh, the in, is inconsistent rhetoric and the mixed message is, is there when, 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 when and the Philippines just talk about the issues in South China Sea. Although um, uh, for the past uh, uh, few uh, months, I think uh, the Philippines have taken uh, a much stronger uh, position toward China in, in, the, in, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, the, the issues on, in, in Spratly Islands, for example, but still. We see that in the media, then uh, the, the message is, is quite mixed sometimes. 
The next one in the case of Malaysia, for example, uh, this is quite uh, uh, interesting because uh, uh, Malaysia issues rare rebuke against uh, China over South China Sea. So yeah, Malaysia uh, 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 seldom uh, give a, a strong statement against China over uh, issues in South China Sea. And then uh, 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 as KL rejects Beijing claims in South China Sea, but at uh, the same time in, in a short span amount of time, we can see that uh, Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin meets uh, Chinese, China's Defense Minister on bilateral cooperation. So again, um, uh, we, when we take a look at that, yes, there is a, a, a quite a strong statement against South China Sea, but at the same time, and then uh, there is also talk about bilateral cooperation. So still, um, um, uh, I mean, for for uh, the readers, then they might find that this is quite a different tone in 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 approaching the the issues in South China Sea, and then uh, the next one is Malaysian foreign ministers say no Chinese vessel intrusion in last hundred days, but ex minister rebuts him again. Uh, this is quite interesting coming from a, 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 a Malaysian uh, official uh, sort of uh, uh, supporting Chinese. Uh, 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 positions of not intruding in 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 in, uh, in in Malaysian water, for example. But at the same time, uh, there's other party who says that no, that was not true. And the next one, this is this is the last uh, uh, of my uh, uh, slide today. Is uh, how about Indonesian case? Um, interestingly enough, about five years ago, there was a, 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 a I attended a conference, and then there was a, a, a questions in the in the conference that was about South China Sea. There was a question at the time whether or not Indonesia and, and China is the next door neighbor. Well, before the nine dash line, then uh, uh, the answer to that was was uh, actually no. But with with the uh, more uh, and and stronger uh, 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 position by China to claim the nine dash line, for example, suddenly we are a next door neighbor with China. And then when we take a look at that, especially on how the media uh, uh, presented that. And then we can see uh, 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 on how we always find the mixed message too here, uh, especially when we try to uh, uh, make sense about what's really happening here. One time that Indonesia uh, 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 took a very strong stance against China, but at the same time, they also uh, uh, a smooth talk about uh, uh, try to, to have a, a much uh, 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 better uh, and also much more uh, uh, beneficial um, uh, um, cooperation with China. And I think um, uh, the one that, if I may add, I didn't put it here, is that uh, uh, what's really interesting was, was a couple of weeks ago when, when this uh, incident happened and then the next day I found a statement from Indonesia in, in, uh, uh, in the media stating that uh, Indonesia doesn't have any problem with China. And I think, again, going back into the narratives that we have here is actually just uh, uh, the mixed message that this really happening, especially when we take a look, uh, when look at that from uh, the media uh, reports that. And uh, for me, um, again, as a, as a, uh, 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 a scholar of communication, a scholar of conflict, for example, this is quite interesting and, and can be a, a, a really good way for us to, 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 to learn more about uh, how uh, uh, um, the countries uh, who are involved in, in, in the issues of China Sea try to, 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 to win the narratives and then try to, 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 to win the, uh, 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 the way uh, to persuade other people, for example, through the, the, the narratives that they, they have as reported by the media. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Parendro, back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Rudi Sukandar. It's a very nice presentation. Uh, okay, uh, let's get uh, move to the last speaker here. We have uh, Dr. Ari Widodo. Dr. Ari Widodo, are you here with us? Hello, Pari. Hello, Pari. Unmute, Pari. Uh, yeah, I know, but sorry, it's a bit problem on that. Uh, I thought Pari uh, first. Okay. Hello, Pari. Pari. Pak Arif, Pak. Oh, Pak Arif dulu ya? Iya. Yeah. Oke, okay. our guest. <laughs> Sorry, Pak Arif. Pak Arif, we have... Uh... Arif, ini Pak Arif? Yes. Yes, uh, sorry Pak. Ya, kita harus hargai tamu duluan nih. Pak Arif, uh, saya perkenalkan dulu ya. Uh, 
I would like to introduce our fourth uh, speaker, Muhammad Arif, MSc. He's a researcher of ASEAN Studies program uh, at the Habibi Center. Uh, he earned uh, MSc Strategic Studies from uh, Raja, Raja Ratnam School of International Studies in Singapore and have a BA from International Relations Universitas Indonesia Jakarta. He is also managing editor of a Global Journal Politik Indonesia and also lecturer of Department of International Relations Universitas Indonesia Jakarta since 2016. Okay, Pak Arif, silakan go ahead with your presentation. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Why cannot I see my slide? Uh, it's too small. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah, silakan Pak. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, for the opportunity. Good afternoon, uh, um, everyone. Um. So a little bit of disclaimer, I haven't really um, updated my uh, research on the South China Sea thoroughly in the last couple of years. So the security developments in the, the recent security developments in the South China Sea. Um, this is a couple of, of points that, uh, that I um, I wish to discuss uh, today. I think um, previous speakers have done uh, incredible jobs in, in in explaining from different uh, dimensions of how the situation in the South China Sea develops over time. Um, but I think there is always a need uh, for everyone to um, you know to go back to basic and um, remember why we talk about South China Sea in the first place. So I think it's always uh, important to. Uh, to remember why C matters in this regard, why South China Sea matters, and um, I'm going to touch a little bit about the recent and key developments in South China Sea, and also um, how Indonesia perceives South China Sea and, and the uh, recent development in this policy regarding to the South China Sea. Um, so basically, um, you know, despite being, as a uh, Professor uh, Rifani um, explained before, this, despite a long history of being maritime communities, maritime society in this part of the region, I think there's always this um, um, ignorance uh, with regard to that history and with regard to how we do to, to the sea. So, um, it tend to, to, to remember or for us in this part of the region, especially in this, in this country. So C serves uh, three uh, important, um, 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 three important roles for, for humanity, uh, actually. The first is a, is a source of resources, of course. Um, you got fish, you got oil, you got gas. Uh, I mean, in fact, that's, that's one of the, the stories that have, that have been uh, going around when we talk about South China Sea, right? How the uh, oil reserves and the gas reserves in the South China Sea, um, um, you know, it's rich with oil and gas reserves, it's rich with fish, and that's why everything is, is clashing over the uh, uh, the sea in South. So sea is a is a is a, as a resource. And the second, and the second thing we'll see is sea is a medium of communication. Uh, by this, I mean. Um, maybe to make it the the around us uh, to we see maybe you're 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 um, joining this webinar with your laptop are that phones and that laptops and that uh, computers are shipped 
to you through uh, a C. Because seaborne trade is, uh, until today, is still the most uh, economic and the most effective way of transporting goods. It's, it's a lot, still a lot uh, cheaper than, uh, you know, transporting goods via, um, 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 via air or via land. So uh, sea is still the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the most effective way of, of trading between, between uh, countries. And that's why we see... Uh, you know, if we if we pay a visit to Tanjung Priok, for example, or to uh, to Bauhuni, if you if you go to Sumatra by land, you see how the traffic, or if you uh, maybe you know some some of us uh, to to Malaysia, for example, you can see in the in the Strait of Singapore or Strait of Batam, for example, there's a lot of uh, you know uh, tankers and 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 big vessels, uh, you know, waiting to port. So C is a, is a is a is important in that in that matters. And when it comes to South China Sea, is a is a, this fact is even more uh, uh, relevant. You know, um, we talk about how countries in East Asia and this region are very dependent on South China Sea. Their uh, transportation, their goods of their energy, of their oils. Uh, 80% of oil that go to China, to Japan, to South Korea, go through uh, the South China Sea. Uh, it's not surprising that China, uh, Japan, Korea, and other countries in the in this region uh, plays a very important, uh, uh, um, plays a, a high priority uh, in, in the South China Sea because it's very important for them. And sea is also a medium of dominion. Uh, um, using the word of, of Neville historian Geoffrey Till, um, you know, over the, the since since forever, since centuries ago, people have have, have, have been using seas to dominate others. You know, uh, since the era of colonialism and and until today, sea sea has been it's, it's been important has been important in that regard. You know, you dominate others by you know by blockading uh, trade to that country, for example. Or by um, you know, um, I mean, if if if, if, we, if we follow the development of South China uh, Sea on the in the in the in the Taiwan China relations, for example, how the U.S. Uh, once in a while sail their aircraft carriers through the Taiwan Strait, or uh, this couple of months ago in the South China Sea, it carries a symbolic uh, uh, message, you know. When you sail your uh, biggest uh, naval uh, vessels into a region that is conflicted, you, you send a symbolic uh, a message that not you don't want to be dominated or you want you want your interest to be to be uh, to be respected and so on and so forth. So sea has been important in that regard as a resources, as a medium of communication and medium of dominion. And all of these three characteristics are are, are even more relevant when we talk about the South China Sea. Um, yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure not all of us here uh, um, are, um, you know, paying uh, attention to South China Sea uh, um, 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 as, as, as part of your, uh, as part of our academic uh, uh, exercise or, or just casual uh, reading. So I think it's, yeah, just, 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 uh, just a reminder of how the things in, in South China Sea has been developed over time. It's, 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 it's obviously not a new thing, South China Sea. It is getting more complicated recent years for reasons that I want to talk uh, uh, later, but it's not a new thing. Uh, the Chinese nationalist uh, government, um, uh, which later, of course, uh, uh, flew to uh, to Taiwan in 1947, already uh, marks uh, its claims in the South China Sea uh, by a map, uh, which then still uh, had elephant dash uh, elephant dashes. We we know now uh, we, we we now know uh, the the nine dash line the nine dash the, the nine dash line map, but back then it was eleven uh, dash line. Then the seven China claims Paracel Island. So you know in the South China Sea you have two biggest group of islands: the Paracel Islands in the north and these partly islands in the south. In 1947, China first lays its claim in the Paracel Islands. 1982. The law of the sea, the United Convention law of the sea, is established. It is really important in this regard because whenever you, whenever you hear people saying that some countries doing something illegally in the in, in the South China Sea, 
chances are they're referring to uh, to below the sea and it is also important for indonesia especially because the very territorial integrity of this country is is dependent on the uh, the um, the adherence to unclosed by international community so as an archipelagic state i mean we take we take the notion for granted right as archipelagic state indonesia is the biggest archipelagic uh, country there is not always uh, believe it or not before uh, um, before 1980 so before juanda declaration for example um, we were not an archipelagic country in that in that, in that sense uh, seas that seas between our islands back then was considered international waters rather than our territorial uh, waters only after unclos uh, 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 pass in 19 this there there is uh, an official um, official recognition by international community that indonesia is an archipelagic uh, uh, country so unclos is very important in for indonesia in the methods 1998 china established physical presence in this part list and then um, Uh, it, during these years, is, is, it was about China and Vietnam and South China Sea. The clashes was always about uh, uh, China and in, 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 in Vietnam. Only in 1996, uh, uh, involves country other than uh, Vietnam, which was the uh, Philippines in the mischief reef in the spread lease. And in 2002, the ASEAN country and China agree on the so-called declaration the code of conduct in the South China Sea. Um, uh, some of us may be familiar uh, with this. Basically, that ASEAN countries in China agree that uh, everyone uh, that basically they agree that there is something to work on the South China Sea. There is something on fit to work on the South China Sea, and that everything should restrain themselves from using force to change the status quo. And next step uh, from this is the, uh, as uh, Professor Yan Yan uh, mentioned uh, before, is the conclusion the actual code of conduct that is still. They're still working on it until today. Um, 2009, um, uh, interesting uh, um, development of 2009 when Malaysia and Vietnam submit to the UN uh, for the extended continental shelf. So continental shelf is basically a continuation of the land uh, that can, you know, go uh, to 200 nautical miles from your uh, from your um, shore. That states are allowed to uh, propose to have an extended uh, uh, continental uh, shelf and that's what that's what Malaysia and Vietnam did in 2009 they, sub they proposed to they submit uh, um, you know continental shelf and China objected uh, the submission and with the uh, objection a map uh, which was regarded I think the first map that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, really The pics or shows uh, China's uh, claims in the within the area. Then we know we now know as the, the nine dash line. And 2020, 2012, the Scarborough Shoal incident between uh, China and China and the Philippines. And 2012, also three months after the incident in Scarborough Shoal, ASEAN infamously fails to issue a communique uh, after the summit. And uh, 2016, of course, the uh, permanent arbitration. Court uh, rules against uh, China in the case of China uh, v Philippines, uh, basically saying that the nine dash line claim based on UNCLOS and that no features in the sea uh, can be treated as island, and uh, hence um, no uh, exclusive economic zones can be generated from the features in the in this spread lease. Um, 2020, of course, as mentioned before, China establishes the uh, two uh, administrative districts in the, uh, in the South China Sea. And also the latest development, which is quite interesting, I think, is the Battle of Diplomatic Notes, also mentioned before uh, by Professor Yan Yan. How uh, suddenly uh, um, uh, ASEAN countries, namely Vietnam, Malaysia, and Indonesia, um, um, Uh, together, not not to, they, they they submitted individually, but but in the very short uh, span of time, they, they submit a protest and not verbal uh, against uh, Chinese uh, claims. And in that uh, note, uh, uh, verbals, um, uh, 
these countries refers to the 2016 uh, tribunal uh, ruling, which for Indonesia's case is quite important because if I'm not mistaken, that, uh, that was the first time that Indonesia um, in official document uh, mentioned about the 2016 uh, tribunal ruling when they talk about uh, 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 South China Sea. So what I mentioned before is a major tra maritime trade and energy supply route. Um, so Ch South China Sea is, uh, I think we, we now know that South China Sea is very complicated issues. It's a very, it's a multi-layered issues. You cannot approach it, you cannot, we cannot approach it from a single uh, uh, academic uh, uh, background, of course. So I think it's, it's, uh, uh, we should appreciate this um, webinar which take an approach of multi-dimensional approach. I think it's very important when we talk about South China Sea. Um, it's a major maritime trade, so you need to understand economics a little bit when you talk about South China Sea. There is, of course, unresolved maritime boundaries in, in the South China Sea. Um, you know, after UNCLOS, uh, uh, countries are basically allowed to draw uh, exclusive economic zones, but then, of course, when, 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 when countries um, draw their econ uh, exclusive economic zone, uh, Chances are the EEZ would overlap with other countries' EEZ, and they need to 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 settle settle it uh, settle it uh, uh, bilaterally or through uh, 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 courts. And that's what happened in, in South China Sea. There's unresolved uh, uh, maritime boundaries, so you need to have a little bit of background in international law and maritime law. And the third uh, point that makes South China Sea is that uh, there is a chance of um, um, hegemonic, the so-called hegemonic transition. But Julian mentioned a uh, touch about this uh, uh, um, uh, before. By the way, uh, it's, it's a very honor for me to to speak alongside by Julian. When I joined, uh, when I when I got into FISIP UI in 2009, it was by Julian who was the vice dean and, and gave the uh, welcoming speech for the new students. So it's really an honor. Um, and anyway, so as um, uh, people talk about hegemonic transition in the South China Sea. Uh, there is a rising, there is a China that is rising, that is going to uh, replace the United States as the hegemon, and the locus or the the battlefield is going to be in the South China Sea. Chances are it's going to be in the, in the in the South China Sea. Should there should there be a conflict between the U.S. and the South China Sea, um, it would most probably uh, take place in this part of the. In this part of the world, and of course, of course, it's not always about the uh, the great powers. It's not always about China and. and powers that are increasingly outward looking. They are increasingly aware about uh, what is going on in their in their uh, in their um, surrounding, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, Philippines. Uh, these are countries that are, you know, economically growing, financial uh, space to, to, you know, to fund their military modernization. They're increasingly uh, outward looking. They, they don't just want to be, uh, um, you know, um, um, they, they, they want to have a say in, in how things develop in the South China Sea. And, and it makes really things uh, complicated. And the recent and key developments in South China Sea, and I think um, uh, also uh, what we can expect uh, in the near future in the South China Sea is that um, there is a growing assertiveness from, from China despite the pandemic, of course, as mentioned before by Professor Yan Yan, or maybe because of the pandemic. And I think I want to I wanna highlight the... What I'm what I'm saying what I'm what I'm trying to say is that from from a theory from a theory from a theoretical perspective, you know I'm trained as a as an international relations. Um, I'm trained in international it's relations. Me, yes, Pak. Ini, we have fifteen minutes left. Oh yeah. Yeah, bisa dipercepat. Okay. <laughs> Masih ada Pak Arif, Pak Ari Widodo <laughs> belum ke bagian. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think what, what, I'm say, what I'm trying to say is that uh, what is happening in, in, in South China Sea is basically a normal thing, quote-unquote. China is growing, and when you're growing, you want to, uh, you know, assert your interests. 
in and 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 you know to, uh, trying to block uh, other countries from uh, you know interfering in your own uh, backyard that's what Indonesia did in 1960s for example we tried to dominate our uh, our neighbors and it's a normal thing when 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 China is is, is trying to dominate others um and this um, and it's also a normal thing that uh, you know that the 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 status quo countries the hegemonic country of the US is trying to counter react to it by you know uh, 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 gathering alliance and all that um there is a gray zone activities i think you know was, uh, there's a lot there's a lot to talk about this actually but i think for the uh, limited time i just skip it there's a regain momentum for for asean um uh, this year i think in the, the last uh, summit uh, asean came up with the quite strong words uh, when it comes to south china sea and of course we hear about how um uh, you know asean trying to make uh, this as a multilateral thing while china trying to make this as a bilateral thing what i'm saying what i'm trying to say is that it's, it's also a normal thing when you are a great power you want to have control what 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 us is doing with its alliance system uh, in in this region with japan China, with japan taiwan and south korea is exactly that so when you're a great power and you deal with small powers you want to have you want you want you prefer to have bilateral relations rather than multilateral relations and vice versa for for small powers if you want to have more influence when when you're dealing with with great powers you prefer to 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 do it in in multilateral uh, uh, context. So we're going to see this um, this uh, tension between bilateral approach and multilateral approach continue in the future. Uh, uh, Indonesia and, uh, and South China Sea, of course. Uh, I, I think I think the the for the the the, the time is, is of war. But basically, um, that, um, there is a growing uh, attention from the part of Indonesia to uh, the. There is the same orientation, outward-looking orientation from the part of Indonesia. We can see it from the patterns of military modernization and how the forces are deployed in Indonesia. Emphasis on territorial integrity. Uh, President uh, flew to Natuna and all that, having a meeting on board of a, a naval vessel, sending messages to China and all that. Um, global maritime fulcrum. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, there's always a strategic value uh, of international law and rule-based order for Indonesia because that's exactly what uh, legitimizes uh, Indonesia's territorial integrity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is quite important. Uh, I, just, I just asked for one or two minutes. Um, this is um, writer Bill Hayton. I think it's... Um, he wrote a book in, in 2014 and there is this sentence which is very interesting. He wrote, what happens if someone shoots an archduke? What he what he means was, um, if you are familiar with the story uh, with the history of, of the First World War, how it was triggered when the uh, uh, Austrian Austrian uh, uh, um, Archduke Franz Ferdinand was shot, and then uh, you know it, it, it triggered the First World War. But basically, people people believe that uh, that incident, that assassination, was only the trigger. Uh, the while the situation was back then very conducive for a big war, you know there was a rivalry between uh, the British and the and the Germans and, and and you know the balance of our politics in the Europe uh, back then. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand was only the trigger. Now, when we look at the South China Sea, uh, what Bill Hayton was saying is that uh, you know all the ingredients for a big conflict in the South China Sea is there. Uh, it's just a matter. It's just what if someone, uh, you know, miscalculate or there is a there is a, you know miscalculation or misperception and clash and maybe between uh, Chinese Coast Guard and, and and U.S. naval vessels, for example, and that that trigger you know the the, the conflict escalation and and you know a big war in South China Sea. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Arif. Now let's move to the last speaker. Dr. Dr. Ari Widodo, silakan Pak. Pak Arif, tolong uh, presentasinya di close dulu. Thank you, Pak uh, Yeah, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll just be very brief because uh, there's so many uh, points has been uh, 
uh, presented uh, by by the other panelists before. Uh, let me, okay. Ari Widodo ini adalah program director of e-learning program at LSPR, lecturer, LSPR, yeah, lecturer, PhD in journalism, School of Journalism and Creative Street Writing at the University of Wollongong, Australia. Master of Arts is also at the same uh, university. Yeah, uh, silakan Pak. Okay, uh, thank you Pak Randall for the introduction. I'll, I'll promise I'll be brief. Hopefully I can do this in three minutes because uh, that's what we do now in Australia, three minutes presentation. So today I'm just going to maybe try to connect a few bits in there, but from media perspective, that a lot of discussion and debates that we have now is about what we have in, in the public space. And what we have in the public space is often related with what the media presented to us. So is it now means that it's a conflict? It's a conflict by uh, says by, by who? Who says it's a conflict? I mean, yeah, there is uh, a different interest, there, there is a, a, a differences in the way we do government. Well, that means equal with conflict. Now, definition that we have a conflict or possible conflict, I think from media perspective has been a lot about uh, coming from the media uh, point of view. But then um, media here, we also have to remember, it's not just about the mass media, but also the public forum. Yeah. So when we have social media, it seems to be like harder to control, but actually it's not. It's not really that hard to to to, to play with the social media or, uh, alike, because if you know how, there are ways to to bring up an issue, to direct certain issues in the directions that we we want them to be. So in terms of the, what happened in South China Sea is that I think it's a lot to do with the force that we have now, the perception of the conflict. So we brought us about the, 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 the underlying issue. What exactly is the issue? I think I like the, 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 uh, the, the point that Dr. Yang presented that uh, in, in the beginning that Alfi tolong di Bisa kamu yang ini yang Oke. Okay. Alright, thank you. Uh, the underlying issue here like Dr. Yan Yan presented is that we have um, a complex uh, issue at at hands. And it depends on how we want to proceed that proceed proceed with it. I think um, um, what she presented was we may not have an end as well. All is just part of the journey. So we, when we have this journey, we can probably have a few step back and a bit more relaxed, and then it's like, okay, what do we have here? And 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 uh, in this region itself, for instance, we are talking about at least close to 20 different nationalities and countries, just like Professor Rivani um, has presented earlier. And of course, differences in the, in the, in the interests and the needs and et cetera will be so much different. And let alone that if you look into the map, I think maybe, I don't know, uh, 50%, 60% of the global uh, trading from East Asia Japan, uh, South Korea, and China will pass through there because it's a maritime, uh, a maritime route. No wonder then the global power, like um, uh, uh, Dr. Julian has uh, presented as well, has a uh, see this uh, area as a as a major stake for them, and therefore it is important uh, that we also put that in mind that. Um, it is understandable that global power see this as as a situation that is quite serious, but it's also um, an opportunity that we can also see it from uh, a different perspectives, a multiple um, multiple perspectives. Now, um, but my point here is that behind the scene, 
the 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 the, the story might be quite different, despite all the 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 rhetorics and the, and the discourse about conflict presented by global power. I think from media perspective, there is something else going on. And I, I'm, because I'm not a practitioner in, in, in diplomacy, I mean, in reality, but in, in when I might, from my days in, in, as, as a journalist, there always be a story behind the story and often it's like an iceberg. What being, 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 being known by the, the, the public, maybe only just a tip, like 10%, but the beneath it, the complexities, the issues, and etc., will be um, will be much different. Uh, maybe if I have to jog uh, people' uh, memory, anyone remember about uh, a, a scandal called Iran Contra? The things that supposedly never happen, but it happens because then it came up in the public. And this, the world, our world is is like that. So I think. Um, from from various speakers that we have here, I, I found a great enjoyment to to uh, to listen uh, uh, to listen to them and and absorbing a the totally different perspectives. So I think the story or the real story, the main story or the main uh, thing behind this so-called conflict or tension or whatever. It's still out there, and it's it's not yet been understood yet, at least for the general public. So with that, I think in the end we just have to open the mind, open the possibilities, and I hope that we have time to have a, a, a discussion to discuss about the multiple view that was presented by the uh, the, the panelists today. Uh, thank you, and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fahri. Okay, we are finished with the presentation from all uh, speakers. Now let's move to the next steps of the question and answer. I will read some questions that I have here. Uh, first questions. <laughs> I think uh, we can extend about 30 minutes if uh, it's okay for all of the participants because yeah, we have uh, some questions that need to be discussed today. Number one, uh, from Puti, for all speakers, uh, especially from Indonesia, can Indonesia continue to balance China's provocation in Natuna waters? Meanwhile, in terms of military strength, we are far behind the PRC, uh, People's Republic of China, the worst is the cost for a one hour of operation for a frigate type ship for diesel alone. It costs around nine, 900 million rupiah. Then what will the Indonesian government do in all these limited condition? Anyone, any speaker want to answer this question from Puti? Uh, Julian, maybe? Dr. Julian? Or Pak Rudy? Oh, ya, yeah, Pak Julian. Silakan Pak Julian. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I was in the middle of the, the other Zoom. Okay, could you repeat the last part of the question? I didn't... Uh, yeah, yeah, can Indonesia continue to balance China provocation in Natuna waters? <coughs> Meanwhile, in terms of military strength, we are far behind the China. The worst is the cost for an operation for a frigate uh, type ship. It costs around 900 million rupiah. Then what will the Indonesian government do in all these limited condition. All right, okay, I got the point. Uh, well, I think since if because we have uh, have intention and have uh, interest in the, our territory, uh, talking about the Natuna Islands, 
And then, as we know, the decline of the nine dash line from China is rich the area at least because if you compare with the others like the Parasol Islands or the Spratly Islands, yes, of course, uh, Natuna is a rel relatively uh, a little bit far uh, compared to the others. But uh, this is the sovereignty of Indonesia. We know that the, uh, I think so one of the, our uh, our president addressed about the global maritime fulcrums. I think we had the strike to the point about the, the global maritime fulcrums. We know, and I think all of us remember when the president Joko Widodo addressed uh, global maritime fulcrum at the time. And I think it's the, the in 2014, in the, one of the Asian summits, and oh, sorry, I, I don't remember about the place. I think this is the, uh, maybe, yes, yeah, so one of the Asian, Asian nations countries. Then at the time, President Jokowi addressed about uh, uh, Indonesia will be becoming a global maritime focus. This is actually, if we really implementing uh, the global maritime outcome in practice, we don't need to uh, to worry about anything that we happen in the uh, our territory because we have to preserve and protect our territory because we have the ability to do that. Now, but uh, it's, it is my view. If we look at the map and uh, by the uh, Nepi or the Nepal uh, uh, perspective standpoint, we know that now uh, China could be uh, tried to the exercising power around there to testing the water in the, in the quote and quote to see uh, the react of the other countries if they try to uh, to to reach the outer territory outside of China. It's actually in based on Ancos is uh, jurisdictions talked of. Uh, a part of the of the the countries like uh, uh, Philippine climb is the their own uh, territory in the Spratly on the Paris Island, for instance, and, and 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 so on. So, if we look at this uh, activity, the military activity in the Southeast Asia, especially and the nearest to the area of the of the Natuna Islands, I think it's not not so uh, so. Uh, maybe what are the terms? It's not so for, for us in Indonesia. Not so so difficult uh, to to handle because we know this actually is could could not uh, be a big uh, problem or the war, for instance, at the area because it's only just the uh, n not in involved in so many vessels at the like uh, based on the nuclear on etc. So if uh, Natuna really uh, trouble seem like the the uh, Paris Islands or the Spratly, we have to go to the to 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 the I mean the, like uh, uh, tribunals and the international tribunals like the Philippines to uh, confirmed and and with, of course uh, we have confidence to do that because they are based on the ANCOS and the uh, international uh, agreements like the China is actually uh, involved there. So this is a uh, uh, frame of the South China Sea. So we, if the the could be happen in terms of the world world in the bigger world, maybe. Yeah, I, I, as I, I pray or uh, mentioned, that uh, could be uh, getting worse situation there. And because the rivalry between the US and the, the China, but I think, and I'm pretty sure, that it's only that the, because the, between the two, both China and the US, they really know if they actually class at the area is no zero sum games. I mean that this actually they don't need to go for war, for instance. But the 
uh, tension is getting higher and higher. It could be it's a dynamic from the, the area, but it probably it's not, not so to bring out the, the other war, like the, the third war. But why I mentioned about the, I'm very concerned and deeply concerned about the situation in the Southeast uh, Asia, especially in the, the area of uh, Southeast, uh, South China Sea. Because nobody knows who controls the PLA. This is the point. I have to highlight the, this, this statement because, you know, a storytelling. If we, we look the history, uh, then uh, we know that the why Japan suddenly attacked uh, the Pearl Harbor. It's not the directly directed from the emperors. It's, it's just only as the decision making create by among the general of the uh, military services in Japan, not directly close to the, to the direction of the emperor. So this is a very dangerous if the story uh, repeat again in terms um, in, 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 the, in the situation in the South China Sea. So this is the way why uh, actually I should uh, make Probably all of us should pay much attention about this, this situation because the problem is not the directly if we if we look the situation by the U.S. perspective, we know it. This decision of war in the U.S. government is actually they, uh, uh, they have to pass the process like the Senate, for instance, or the House of Representatives. But in China, we don't know. The, the problem is the PLA is yes, who controls the PLA. This is the point I think we should uh, we should uh, care for about the situation. Could be uh, miscalculated, and the potential work could be happened in the area of the South China Sea. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, if I may add? Yeah, please. Uh, uh, just just two short things, because the question is related to uh, uh, the Natuna Sea, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think um, um, uh, Indonesia has already sent a very clear message to 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 uh, to China, especially, for example, when we look at uh, uh, President uh, 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 Joko Widodo visit to to um, um, uh, South China Sea, and then after that, uh, in 2017, if you remember that uh, Indonesia renamed the, the area as the North Natuna Sea, and I think that's just sending a very clear message about Indonesian. Uh, positions in that case. And the second one is uh, uh, Indonesian response to uh, what happens uh, last week with the uh, 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 Chinese vessels uh, uh, roaming around the uh, uh, Indonesian EEZ, for example. And, and again, at the same time, the response is the same regarding the, uh, 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 the military response to that, uh, sending the, uh, the patrols to the area. And in this case, I think um, um, uh, regarding the uh, uh, Natuna Sea, then uh, I think um, uh, we have already sent a very clear message. I mean, Indonesian government uh, already sent a very clear message about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Parudi. Uh, next question is back to uh, there is a question from Inham Saki Pangestu uh, to Dr. Yan Yan. Uh, is Dr. Yanya still with us? Hello, Dr. Yanya. Hello. This is a question from Ilham Saki Pangesu. Uh, could you explain based on what China claim more South China Sea by detailed data, especially from history, geology, geology, role of zone, zona economic. Could you give us data about that? If you is still with us, Dr. Yan Yan, could you answer that question? I think she already left. Okay. Anyone, any, any speaker want to comment on this question? Professor Rifani, maybe? Uh, can, there, there was a 
I, I was asking my 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 Edward Snowden a student from Malang here uh, uh, to rephrase the question. Can can you can you rephrase or repeat the question so that I understand the question again? Yeah, could you explain? Sorry, Dr. Yeah, it is. Uh, the question is for Dr. Yan Yan actually. Could you explain based on what China claim more on South China Sea by detailed data? Especially, oh, wow. from, especially from history, geology, role of zona economic. Okay, uh, um, I, I, I can't claim that I know, uh, you know the specific data, um, but the one I presented just now, <coughs> and, and I'm definitely not the most up-to-date person when it comes to the latest um, development in Southeast, uh, South China Sea. Uh, however, at the at the paradigm level, the arguments being made is basically uh, it's not necessary, and and this is based on 2016 one I know, so I don't know what what what, what the latest uh, <coughs> development is, but a very strong basis of the of the claim is is uh, is, uh, is 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 been is been put on the burden of historic seas, which means. Uh, which means um, the, the the argument is very very much cultural and historical practices of of uh, of, uh, uh, of China China's experience in the sea. So uh, more so than <coughs> and the, the nine dotted line is actually some say is very much uh, uh, arbitrary. That also you know it's a U shape U shape line. So. It's not a not a sovereign territory claim as much as historic seas claim. So if we can make the same argument, which is based on the paradigm that this space actually belongs to us, this space has been occupied for us, this space has been um, with us for a long, long time. Number one, number two, that this is a, a, a Nusantara type sea, which is uh, which is a a kind of sea that's very much similar to Mediterranean type sea, and then uh, <coughs> it first of all it doesn't make it ethical for somebody else to come in and to make to privatize the space, right? The the second thing is that it's not practical as well. To um, it's not a practical approach to to have a harmonious relation uh, and harmonious uh, kind of. Uh, 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 way forward, uh, trajectory to move forward. So um, the the that that's how much I can say. So my argument is very much at the paradigm level more than the the data level. So if we continue to pursue <coughs> the data within the paradigm, then we'll be caught by the the rules of the games of the paradigm. Uh, and we want to say that there's a better way to play. The be there's a better way to engage. There's a better way, and then then to to get into this this paradox. Right? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Dr. Ari and me, we are we are having fun with this idea right now. So, so we are caught in this par paradox. <laughs> it's paradox because, in a way, it's a paradox. And then you bring in the politicians in. They have the front stage, the backstage. And maybe more the side stage, and then you know all, all kind of stages maybe. So that's why I'm saying they maybe. <laughs> and then all these stage, all these stages are a stage, a front stage for some people, a back stage for some people. So <coughs> in in this world where you know it's a post-truth or multi-truth world, uh, data uh, is so contextualized. Data is is sometimes. Um, misappropriated and people are selective in believing what data and presenting what data that uh, <coughs> you will be stuck in the same paradox and uh, so that, I think that would be my argument so we got to do Santa this 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 uh, this um, South China Sea we got to do Santa this uh, this uh, reality we haven't brought in our voice, right? The Dusantara voice has not been heard enough, right? and we got to bring back 
the the power of Nusantara, the heritage of Nusantara, and uh, and bring back the you know it's, it's heritage argument. So that that I think I think that that's my my main point. Right. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, another question here is uh, from Evi Arbai. There is two question. What spill spillover effect from China U.S. conflict in SCS for Indonesia and other ASEAN country? And the second question is is from uh, Evi also. Yeah, how do you see about the possible conflict between China and Taiwan? And Taiwan try to collect support from other country, including Indonesia. And what should Indonesia respond on it? As Indonesia only believe one China policy. Uh, Pak Julian, maybe first comment. This is uh, about uh, Indonesian foreign affairs policy. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you very much. Dari uh, Mbak Evi, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I try to do the second, uh, the second part uh, question first. So uh, Taiwan, I think is 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 did uh, clear enough. Yeah, it was clear enough about the Indonesian position to agree on the unity of uh, people of Republic of China. This one China policy. So then. Uh, Taiwan, of course, you know that uh, to some extent, uh, Taiwan uh, uh, states that the, the position is the, like the, the other countries, independent countries. But actually, if it refers to the agreement of the international and the United Nations, we know that there is no, 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 no discuss about that. It is the position of the state in terms of uh, the frame of the state. And the international relations. So, but uh, but the problem is because we know that the, the constellations, uh, the South, South uh, East Asia, actually, the position of the Taiwan is the entry point to the mainland, the center. Uh, as I said, Vincent, uh, before that, the Taiwan is the center, and the the, the East, the peninsula, is the northest uh, uh, side of the. China mind mind. So this is very, uh, I think, support for China, especially for mainland. This is very important for them because uh, if you talk about the access of the uh, ocean, access of the the, the the wider ocean to yeah to to support the oil pipelines, for instance, or the the, the, the other activities for the China mind. This is very easier if they through the Taiwan Bay. But the problem is because we know that the Taiwan now uh, give a high, uh, high sign, sign now for the China, not only for China per se, but the, over the, around the world to, to their position as political standpoint. That the Taiwan has a position is not the same that's familiar with the China. And it's a different, different country or the different uh, part, even though it, the, the sun, if the reverse of the international uh, uh, agreement, it is the only one China policy, as mentioned. The problem is because the, the close ties with the U.S. Now China tried to, or like I I I, tried, I described uh, before, to the uh, build several artificial islands to block. Uh, and to 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 cut the uh, close ties uh, supported alliance from the the U.S. to the Taiwan. If it is possible for China, probably the negotiation in terms of the negotiation between the mainland and the Taiwan could be different. Could be uh, I think that a little bit difficult for us or for them to make a new agreement or reach a point uh, between the Taiwan and the, between the China. So the, the major factor is just only uh, the U.S. present there uh, with the Taiwan. So the, the first question, I think, uh, sorry, I, I, I missed the question. Could you repeat again the first question? Sorry. 
very briefly. The first question, uh, what spill of our effect from China-US conflict in SCS? Yeah, I think so. I, I just, I read is it my, 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 my concerns about the situation to getting rights and un, un, uh, uncontrollable. So, due to the, as I should mention again, due to we don't know what's actually the aim of the objective of the PLA of China, because the military of China has their, their own uh, hierarchy inside, so it is not totally different. I don't see that the President Xi Jinping have the fully uh, authority to control the military of China. So because there's because by this is the storytelling standpoint, you can see that the result, uh, the the past uh, World War II, like why the decide uh, the decision making uh, created by the uh, Japanese military to attack the Pearl Harbor of the U.S. But it is not, 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 not easy to clear, just make a difficult conversation, I think, to, to that. So the problem is, we have to know, but actually I, I, I really respect if uh, Dr. Young is uh, still here, so the three could be give uh, briefly explanations about the, the, uh, the decision-making process in the PLA, because the, the point is the PLA, not only just the, the, the government of China, not only based on the, the, the President Xi Jinping per se, because yeah, this is a situation is very difficult and very complicated. It's so one hand, the president has their own authority, of course, we don't know doubt about that. But the, the other hand, PLA have has uh, I tell you, has the, the, their own uh, authority or own uh, objective. It's probably it could be not the same line or the same uh, align with the, 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 we hope that the president see. I think this is uh, this uh, my response to the, uh, the screen of for the situation of the South China Sea. The problem is not, it's based on the, the, the uh, formal government. The problem is the who control the PLA. This is PLA is very important to know. And, uh, how far to the guarantee that the PLA not to make a decision uh, for the, yeah, I think so, because you know, but if we see that the naval, uh, a few point of the Navy, we know that the embrace to the wider uh, 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 ocean of, in terms of the territory with many big countries in the South China Sea, probably it's not the direction between the, the and the, like the democratic uh, system. We know that the president, like the president, with the other uh, uh, democratic uh, countries, we can we can understand. It could be understandable, but in China, I don't know. I'm not sure. So, but I'm sure if the situation in the South China Sea, it could be uh, calling down, like, uh, for right. instance, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, Dr. Gilead. We still have only five minutes. Left. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, we have, uh, still have four questions and one comment. So I, I think I just read the last two questions. Uh, so it is for, for, from Janet Dia Ekawati for Dr. Jan uh, and uh, maybe uh, the other speak, speakers uh, can answer these questions. I would like to hear your comments on the C CCG 5204 and Indonesia's Mar Maritime, Maritime Law Inform Enforcement Agency. Bakamla and the Indonesian Navy in the North Natuna Sea two weeks ago. The second question is, what is your outlook and possible armed conflict between major 
powers in the South China Sea and in and is Indonesia prepared for such a conflict? Um, who will answer this question? Maybe Pak Arif or Pak Rudi? Ya, silakan Pak Arif. Waktunya tinggal lima menit. <laughs> right. Um, Singkatan. Yeah, I, I, sure. Um, is a is a is a, is, a, is a, the the point I think is a, is a new challenge in the South China Sea, the Coast Guard expansion and how countries use Coast Guard in the South China Sea. The conventional wisdom is that whenever countries prefer, whenever countries refrain from using uh, navy and instead use uh, Coast Guard, that country send uh, a peaceful message. You know, White Hall is more peaceful than the Grey Hall. That's the conventional wisdom. But what's happening in the South China Sea is that countries using Coast Guard uh, in a passive way. And China is not alone uh, in that regard, of course. Uh, other countries, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, all trying to uh, to expand uh, their uh, Coast Guard capabilities. And I think the challenge is to find a new um, a new procedures or a new of a new code of conduct or the rules of engagement which involves this uh, Coast Guard cooperation. For Indonesia, I think the, the challenge, of course, and this, this is the old uh, problem, uh, how to streamline the maritime security governance. Are we, do we agree that uh, Bakamla is going to be the, the Coast Guard of Indonesia or, you know, the, the, the nexus between Bakamla and the Navy and other agencies and all this? So the streamlining maritime security governance is the, the, the challenge for, for, uh, for um, Indonesia. Okay, um, uh, because we have uh, uh, finished out, uh, the, uh, maybe we just can have a uh, last statement from all speaker. First from Professor Pifani, would you like to give last statement or comment? Professor? Okay, just now I was presenting my backstage so that my front stage can do something else. <laughs> uh, I think uh, uh, I just now I did not start by thanking, uh, doing the appropriate thing, by thanking Dr. Renro uh, Research Center, uh, LSPR Research Center. Saya juga lihat ada Ibu Hersinta di situ juga, Mbak Hersinta, who was the previous uh, head of uh, research center. In fact, Pari was long, long time ago, like a uh, last millennial or something like that. <laughs> he was the head of research center. So, so I, I, I've been uh, close and working together with LSPR for quite some time now. So thank you very much for uh, keeping this friendship going. You know, I really appreciate that. And uh, perhaps the last, the point I want to raise is this, right? If we ourselves uh, the new sometimes, right? Uh, we also do not define our own space, right? Someone else will come in and fill the vacuum. And if 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 uh, ASEAN cannot come together, then some parts of ASEAN must come together and and speak the same voice and offer a different paradigm, not not the same paradigm where uh, problems will keep on occurring. And uh, and and that paradigm is very legitimate, very um, cultural, very powerful, and that is the Nusantara Maritime Paradigm. That will be my closing remark. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ipani. Uh, Pak Ari, selanjutnya, closing statement. Pak Ari. Me? Okay. Uh, yeah, the... oh, thank you very much uh, for all the honorable speaker here, Professor Ipani, Dr. Julian, Pak uh, Rudi Skandar, Pak Arif, and Dr. Yan Yan, uh, maybe that this connection, connection has been very uh, unstable, I can understand. And uh, uh, this issue, it's uh, far from finished, it's, it's not left. It's, I don't think that we'll, we'll see the end of this issue uh, anytime soon, but I think it, as, a, as a scholar and as academic, I think we can take a lot of uh, good point as a lessons learned from, from what we have seen and um, this is a history uh, uh, unraveling uh, in front of us. So 
yeah thank you again for all the uh, audience who came by to to see this discussion and uh, see you again next time thank you thank you very thank you Pak Ari uh, Pak Julian ada closing remark <laughs> closing statement yes uh, thank you yeah, I would like to take this opportunity the last part opportunity to address my my statement but prior to that I would like to thanks for the all uh, all of uh, College of the London School of Public Relations who organizing this event is very good and very enlightening for us. And I, I think it's, it's not no, no statement from, uh, from me, but I should be amplified the, uh, the uh, statement of the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, that uh, he, he mentioned uh, in the title of the war will benefit no one. Okay. I couldn't agree with him more about that because no one around us agree if we get involved in the war. So the concern of escalating tensions between the United Nations and China. So if Guterres alert us and give a warning about the world have to against the new cohort, but I think as I respectfully disagree about the, the situation. In, in in my opinion, now we are the now actually in the, the midst of the new cohort. But the problem is if we have to face the really war, so what should we do uh, for every single country and every single people of the country. So I think is the, the most important thing, the title should be addressed again by the Secretary General to we fight the war. So we will not, uh, we, we agree that the real war will benefit no one, but actually we fight or we face to against the war. Okay? So I think this is the, my closing statement about the our discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Julian. Uh, selanjutnya, Pak Arif, Arif bisa memberikan closing statement, Pak? Um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, such an issue is very complex issues, of course, but at the same time, I think it's um, coming from international relations background, political science background, I think um, what's happening in South China Sea to, to a very significant extent is um, is um is predictable quote unquote i mean uh, scholars have been writing about uh, how great powers behave and how smaller powers, uh, respond to great powers politics since you know since many times ago so i think um uh, yeah in that regard again what's what's happening in in, in south china sea is normal quote unquote but at the same time of course it's very complex issues involving many uh many um uh Many, uh, com many aspects, economic, politics, legal, uh, communication, of course. And I think um, uh, this is a reality. This is um, South China Sea is, is here. So for Indonesians, I think it's important to, to understand more about this, uh, uh, this thing. Thank you again for LSVR for inviting me. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Arif. Uh, dan terakhir dari Pak Dr. Rudi Sukandar. Thank you very much. Yeah, Valendro, this is just a, 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 a short uh, a, a closing statement. I think we are in the uh, unitalarism uh, uh, age right now when every uh, country just uh, uh, focus more attention on inward looking on how they maintain and also preserve their interests. And I think the challenge that we have right now is how uh, uh, unitral uh, 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 claim, for example, is, is opposed to the, uh, the, the law that we have had so far. So um, uh, um, um, the enforce, uh, uh, how we enforce the law, for example, uh, um, about the unclause, for example, uh, and then vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis the, uh, uh, the unitral uh, claim, for example, this has become uh, our main uh, uh, challenge right now, especially when, when we are uh, uh, 
discussing South China Sea issues. Okay, with that, uh, also I would like to thank uh, uh, all uh, fellow spec uh, speakers today. Thank you for your time and then giving the time for uh, LSPR Research Center to 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 have this uh, uh, very uh, interesting discussion today. Uh, so back to you, Parendro. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pa Rudy, and that will be all. And uh, kita akhiri diskusi hari ini. Uh, barangkali kita foto bersama ya, Alfi sudah siap. <laughs> pa, partisipan bisa. Kamera on. Terima kasih banyak atas kehadiran uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian, mahasiswa ya, Pak. yang tetap bertahan ya. Ada berapa nih yang mesti bertahan? <laughs> 100 lebih masih. masih ya. Ya, Oke, okay. kamera on. Pak Arief, kameranya on. Uh, sorry Pak Arief. Pak Arief. Hmm, sudah menghabiskan tiga jam lagi. Ya. Baik. Oke, okay. one, two, three. Sebentar ya. Ya, one more. One, two, three. Gini boleh. Like this. Gini ya. Oke. Okay. Bentar. Sip. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you, Alfi. Thank you, Alfie. Thank you All partisipan, ya. Kita mendapatkan uh, insight yang baik sekali hari ini dan sampai ketemu lagi dalam acara monthly discussion yang diadakan oleh Research Center LSPR Jakarta. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak Julian. Terima kasih, Paul. Terima, terima, terima kasih semua ya, kemarin. Terima kasih, Pak Ali. Pak Budi. Saya izin pamit ya. Makasih Mbak Evi. Mbak Evi saya masih ngutang email ya, mohon ditunggu. Pak Rudi, kemana aja, Pak Rudi? Saya kemarin tinggal.